and we are live what is going on everybody happy wednesday for some weird reason i'm just gonna say it i don't know this song playing right now um reminds me of and i know it's different but this thing about the melody nintendo 64 super mario 64 the underwater eel level it just ended but something about the melody it, it was weird right now it took me it took me back to n64 days Anyways, how's everybody doing? Let's see who's all here today. We've got Man of the Croc, PF is here, Lisa's here, RS, Simon, Aaron, uh, Maurice is in the house, Bearded Bucket. I trimmed up the beard and the hair for you, Bearded Bucket. Um, we've got Zombie, how's it going? Thanks for the raid, Hobo, Alvaro, Bardicus, how's it going? Happy hump day. Alien made it on time. Blank background, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, I, I have like a love hate with the, uh, with the blank background. So I think it looks nice, but it's also incredibly boring, but it does, it has like kind of a nice contrast with me, I suppose, but it's only temporary. Um, I just ordered another workbench. So one of these will be going over there. So I'll be able to work on two different things. And then the big Ikea order I placed will be here in the middle of March. So another 30 days and we'll start seeing things getting populated. So for now it's, I mentioned last week, I feel like uh, Bruce Almighty in that room with the big filing cabin. It's just, it's kind of empty space. So, hey Keith Cutta, Ted's here, how's it going? Butler Monkey, thank you. Hey, thank you for the membership. Yep, I did clean up. My Aaron, I've been saying stuff for a while, and Aaron had said something a couple times, and I'm like, all right, I can take a hint, you know? So I took off early, I think Sunday morning, right when the, the hair cutter opened. I looked, there's, I'm very peculiar about who I go to my haircut with. So there's only one person I'll go to, and they happen to be working, so I dropped everything and flew out there. Hey, Liz, happy Wednesday. Uh, maybe need something on the wall. Yeah, there's, but there's, our, I've got it planned out. So, it's gonna be three of those pegboards here, and then we're gonna have the LED or neon, neon-ish LED sign as well. So I just don't wanna hang anything yet. And then there'll be a bunch of filament on that side. So bear with me, it'll be, it'll be a few more weeks. I can, I can uh, maybe do some hand drawing. Uh, one of the streams will do some hand drawing and I'll place that up on the wall or something like that. Multi-board on the back of your tools. It's gonna be the same, the same Scatus pegboard. I really like the Ikea, Ikea line. Now that I'm thinking about it though, I don't know how that's gonna work because of the direction of the tools. I didn't think about that. The, the, we're gonna be using the same Scatus tools. I might have to do, instead of three vertical, four then, like two and two. So take one of the older ones and I ordered three new ones. I'll figure it out. But yeah, I, I liked, I really like, especially since we're doing all the stream and builds are pretty much up here, being able to just quickly turn around and grab whatever I need right there versus everything right now is sort of, I, I can just grab some stuff off the ground. It's it's already becoming a mess, but everything is in these fantastic tubs now from the move. And I didn't label them because it was quick and I was like, oh, they're going back up on the wall. So yeah, I, I miss having things just in, uh, you know, a quick reach because now I'm, I'm searching 10 tubs every single time I need to find something. So it's, it's been, it's been a little interesting. Oh, multi-board is 3D printable. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I really like the Scatus stuff. Um, I really like the Scatus stuff. I'm a big fan of it. And I like the brown, the brown color, but I know I could print the, everything in any color, but since I already ordered it and I've got a bunch of stuff for it, I think that's what I'm going to stick with for now. Uh, good evening. Hey, 106, 1066. I have a question. What is the difference between the ender wire and switch wire? Because I have an ender three. I want to convert, but not sure which one it's basically the same thing in a sense. The key difference is like switch wire has a slightly bigger build volume, if I'm not mistaken, because you're using the Prusa style bed. Um, and it's just a bigger printer. You're also using 30, 30 extrusions while the ender wire is sort of using as much of the ender as possible, like the frame, the power supply, the bed, and turning it into as close to a switch wire as possible. So they call it the ender wire, but kind of the same thing, um, slightly different. The, the switch wire is definitely a bit beefier of a, of a printer than the ender wire. Uh, the Scatus can only go vertically. Yeah, I, didn't, I don't know why I didn't think about that when I, I, I had catted up a brief design of the studio that I can't I can't find now, so that's fantastic. And I, I didn't realize that they were one direction, but now that I'm saying it out loud, it sounds obvious. So we'll figure it out. If they come in and they don't work out, then maybe we will look at a printed solution. I really like, I don't know on the printed solution how many 
holes you have to put in the wall, but I really like with the Scatus that it's just two holes per pegboard, so you're not putting a ton of holes into the walls, so. Hey, do it, how's it going? Uh, you'll get there, yeah, we'll get there with time. Hey, Kelton. Okay, so let's bring my, my underwire kit, should be here this week, nice. Thank you, that's the one I will be going for, kindly appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So let's bring everyone kind of up to speed on what we did last week, what we didn't do last week. So last week we, let me grab the actual, the state of the printer right now. Move this stuff to the side, grab the printer. Okay, so. Last week we, Del Delilah, stop it. Let me point at Delilah. There she is. Hey, <laughs> Delilah. <laughs> now she knows. She doesn't want to look up because I caught her licking her paws. She's not supposed to lick her paws. Let's see. Here we go. Hey, Delilah. <laughs> Delilah, can you say hi? Come here, Delilah. <laughs> You're okay. I just don't want you licking your paws. Yeah, she she gets nervous and licks her paws all the time, but she's <laughs> she's awesome. Okay. So, <laughs> anyways, what we did last week was we. We're out of the belts, so all belts are done. We had already done the Y axis, but we got both the X, Z belts uh, routed through everything, which wasn't wasn't awful. And she listens about as well as my pups. Yeah, she listen <laughs> she listens for like 60 seconds, and then the second she knows I'm distracted, she's totally back at it. But she's yeah, she's awesome, total sweetheart that dog. Okay, so we did that, and then we had turned our focus to building the tool head, which is the stealth burner, and the so we did a few things we completed completed the clockwork to extruder the only thing we uh, i reprinted was this latch cover if you remember i don't know if i even have the previous version or did i chuck it already no i have it the previous version that i had printed didn't look so good it looks like it was maybe heat related um if zombies here this was printed on a k1 so you can tell by all the, the z artifacting and then this was printed on the X1. Nope, this was printed on the P1S, this new piece. So most all the print, most all of the printed parts on this build are from the K1 Max, but a few parts here and there are from the P1S. So reprinted the latch because I wasn't happy with the print quality. So Clockwork 2 is completely done. And then we also finished the hot end assembly, which was which was a complete. I remember I. <laughs> So a few things that were silly is one, we were we measured this and cut this down to I believe 11 millimeters, and then I pushed it in and it went in way further. So we I realized I hadn't bottomed it out, which was a complete goof on my part. And then also I don't have a I don't have my um, oh uh, exacto knife, so we used this guy and it was kind of dull. Uh, so we ended up flipping it around and got this all situated. Uh, PF, thank thank you very much, man, for 10 memberships. Cheers. Cheers as well. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. PF, you've been a huge supporter of the channel and definitely want to thank you for that. I, I, uh, Alien, can you bug me in the next 48 hours to get some new sound effects? I did update some of the songs on the, there's like a new, a new album in our rotation now. So it's not just the two albums, but I need to update the soundboard with a few more songs. And I keep forgetting until we go live because it's me. <clears throat> so yeah, we got this portion of it done. The hot end, for anyone that didn't see it, this is the hot end that's included with this kit. It's sort of like a, uh, I'll drop you a DM and ping you in the mod chat at some point tomorrow. Yeah, sounds great, thank you. Um, it's it's like a V6 heat block with a dragon mounting uh, config up here. It's got a, they give you two heat break options. So they have a PTFE lined one and a all metal bimetal, uh, or bimetallic, I think, not bimetal, but, but yeah. Uh, heat break, which is what we went with. And then the nozzle is a CHT clone. So we'll see how this goes. We're gonna use it because they included it, but I have a pretty cool caddy of like hot ends that need to go into builds. So if we aren't happy with this, we will totally swap it out. But I'm not really going for high flow per se on this printer. I'm more going for consistency because ideally this is the printer I plan on using. Um, this is the printer that I plan on using for the ERCF when we finally assemble it. And so um, high flow typically with the longer melt zone needs more purging um, to clear out that melt zone. So I'm not really going for high flow, but reliability is definitely a key thing that I'm hopefully going to be 
trying to achieve with this printer. Uh, let's see, Zombie says, do I have permission to copy your color scheme? Absolutely. <laughs> I think it's a gorgeous color scheme and also <laughs> it's certainly not original to me since everyone voted on it. And apparently from the comments, this is a popular color scheme. So by all means. Got my Stealth Changer cereal. No kidding, congrats. How many tools? Also, uh, now that we're, you mentioned that, Zombie, I was gonna ask, I know you got your, your Stealth Changer with two tools. It looked like pretty dialed in from what I saw. And, and I think originally you bought like four or five um, orbiters and EBB 36s and all that. Are you still going to be adding more tools or what's the, what's the current status or what's the plan with that? So we left off on the faceplate. And the issue we ran into on the faceplate was that I thought that I had printed out the little um, diffuser for the LED, but apparently I did not. So we ended it, it was already at like the three hour mark. So I was like, ah, it's okay. We'll just, I'll print this out. So got this printed out. I also printed out these guys. Uh, these are a modification from Steve Builds for the fan. Uh, Man of the Croc, thank you very much for becoming a member. Cheers. Thank you, man. Welcome, one month. So these are a slight modification to the fan. If you guys remember, if you were here, the fan just sort of sits and it's supposed to be, let's see, let's move this around. Uh, was it waiting for, in a uh, CUNY mod, it's going to work on it again this week. Awesome. Yeah, I, I really, really like it. I'm eyeballing heavily the black box. Um, so we'll see what happens with that, but I'm also really liking the the um, stealth changer. So for someone that's already got a 2.4, and I think that I saw that he was working on something that would maybe make it Trident compatible as well. I, I really think it's a affordable option to, to build a tool changer. And it seems like from what you're doing, pretty reliable. Uh, is your name green? It is green. And you've got cool emojis. <laughs> Recently went Nighthawk and Galileo 2. My Trident is so much easier to set up than can. Yeah, I, I planning on doing a video on Nighthawk eventually here. I think that for a lot of people, depending on your config and your scenario, that a USB powered tool head with something like Nighthawk is going to be the preferred method. <laughs> hey Jermaine. So the, this is the electronics cooling fan and it just loosely sits in here. Like I can, I don't want to do it. Let me see if I go for the inside, but it just, it, it can pop in and out relatively easily. So. Steve designed a little adapter that you got like a face plate that goes on the outside and you've got another plate that goes on the inside that you put some heat inserts to. And I, he said that if I flip this over, I'd be able to tell how this goes in. So let's see if we can quickly see, but you're, we're essentially going to be sandwiching, sandwiching that fan in place. Okay. Yeah. I see exactly how this goes in. Steve, Steve was right. <laughs> he said I'd figure it out. I'm like, ah, don't underestimate. <laughs> my ability to not figure it out. There we go. Okay, so this is the fan. I'm probably just gonna do this off stream and I can show you guys after, but yeah, so this plate has two little prongs that go into the extrusion and you've got a um, little tab here that goes into the tab here. And so this will be, I'll probably pull the wires through here like this, and this will just drop in like so. And so that will basically sandwich the fan in place. It's a, I mean, I'm gonna, chef kiss for uh, simplicity in terms of the way it just slots in there and uses heat inserts. I really like it, but this is a great solution to just prevent your fan from falling out or possibly getting damaged or shifting around. So yeah, really cool mod. I don't know, hopefully this is posted somewhere. If it's not, I can ask Steve to add it to his GitHub repository, but super cool mod. Put a Galileo on it. On this, on this guy, <clears throat> I do have a Galileo too. It needs to go on something. I'm just not sure what printer yet. Okay, let's move this out of the way and let's get started on the stealth burner. Otherwise, <laughs> we're not gonna make any progress. Okay, so knife goes away. This goes here. <clears throat> She's back licking herself. Watch, watch, let's catch her red-handed. Oh, wait. What were you doing? <laughs> Hold on. Oh, stop focusing. Hey, what were you doing over there? Were you licking your paw again? You know you're not supposed to do that. I can hear you and see you. <laughs> she's, she's like, man, I made a mistake by deciding to hang out in stream room. Okay, anyways. <laughs> 
it's been a, it's been a, I mean, she's like 11 years old now and it's been a struggle her whole life. She just does it and it's gotten better sort of ish, but it's still not good. Her paws get all pink and such. Hey, Elizabeth. Yeah, that's the guilty, <laughs> guilty face right there. Hey, RH. Also, I think RH, you sent me a message while back. I want to apologize. I, I, from the move, I've been playing insane catch up. Like for, for most of you that know, I missed a Saturday's video, which is the first time I've missed a Saturday's videos in two and a half years, even through uh, me and Aaron getting married and through the baby, like I have always maintained my schedule and I just couldn't, I fell behind. And as part of that, I've got a probably like 25 discord messages, a bunch of Twitter messages and emails that like I really want to get to. I just haven't been able to. So if anybody has been messaging me in Discord, it hasn't gotten a response. I am not ignoring you. I am just still underwater and trying to get caught up. So just wanted to make an announcement because I, I apologize. It's something that I'm definitely, I, I like staying on top of things, but I'm one person and I just haven't been able to, and I'm prioritizing getting videos, trying to get them caught up again. So anyways, <laughs> announcement over. Hey, Polo. Uh, it looks like you got a trim. Looks good. Thank you. Yes, I did. I. <laughs> looking a little bit nuts. So I, I I did have to get a trim. All right, so let's see. Stealth burner, no, hey, if you haven't hit the like button, please do. Let's get to, let's see if we can get to 100 to start off with. Okay, stealth burner. So we are working on faceplate today. And the first thing is LEDs. So LEDs are pre-wired. We'll see how We'll see how it all holds up. The issue I've run into a few times is with the wires being too short or too long and being really difficult to sort of tuck into where they need to go, but we'll give this a go. So start off with, this is not, this is still, this is the new house. Yep, we're in the new house. How dare you mate, not make free content. <laughs> I know, I know, like nobody, like I, I'm the only one that really gets disappointed. I just, I, I, I really, pride myself on on maintaining the schedule and I've, something that I was able to stick with for so long but I, I know I have to like I am just one person and there's a lot going on in life so it's sort of it is what it is I'm doing my best and that's kind of all I can do so all right so we got the first one in I'm wondering if I should try to route the wires before I pop the second one in or if I should pop the second one in and then route the wires See, there's like, there's, there's too much wire here. Like if I, this basically needs to go in right here and this wire could be a lot shorter. So I'm gonna try to work with what they've given me, but <clears throat> I have a flat head. Ideally, or in the future, I may end up actually shortening some of these wires to clean this up. So I do I have a small flat head somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's not a super small flathead, but it should work. Speaking of free content, what do you think of the Remix screw unit from your Voron screw holder? I haven't looked at it too much other than the initial post, but I mean, it's cool. I mean, I'm glad that I got credit for it because I haven't designed a whole lot of things that I've shared. And that is one that has gotten a lot of really positive feedback over the last couple of years since I've made it. But yeah, I think it's neat that that um, it was remixed. And I think that the changes that were made were really good improvements. So there's been a few other remixes because originally it was designed for the V0. And I know that there's been a couple of remixes to make it where it's got enough slots for I think like the 2.4. But yeah, some of the changes on there were, were really nice. Yeah, the Rick, I think you, didn't you make the longer one? Oh, it's to the bins, okay. Yeah, the, I mean, the reason I shared the the reason I shared the step file initially was the to make it easier for people to remix it. So it's it's cool to see that there's like some pretty legit ones out there. Yeah, I don't know that I love the length or thickness of wire that they chose for this. Um, maybe if I let's see, let's pull this out. So there's this pocket. There's this pocket right here. It doesn't really have anything that goes into it. And I printed like four of them. Yeah, they've been, did you, uh, did you get the correct pins in your kit? I don't know, You were the, were you the one that commented in the live stream channel about that, that they, they sent the wrong pins? I should have plenty of spare JST connections like PH and um, PH and XT, I think. Where they are, that'll be fun to find out. But yeah, I don't, I don't know if they sent the right pins or not. 
Okay, so that helped a little bit by sort of shoving some over there. Let's see if I can continue this. Man, I really wish these were a little bit shorter. If you have the ability to shorten these, it's definitely not a bad idea. Just makes everything get fit together a little bit nicer. There we go, I think I'm making a little bit of progress. Okay, that looks okay. So that's kind of how I've got it now lined up there. So as long as you put some of the slack in this pocket here, I could have done more. I probably should have done more. Um, let me see, maybe with the blue one I will. But hopefully once it's all on, it'll be fine. There we go. I think Steve, I'm pretty sure Steve remixed the bins when we were doing the, I think Steve remixed the bins when we were doing the VZBot build or was at least going to, but then some of the screws weren't gonna fit where uh, the bins, instead of having sharp corners on the bottom had one corner that was curved so you can easily grab small screws. Yeah, I think that was the plan. It was to remix it like that, but maybe we here he opted not to. I can't remember, but okay. So that's in. So for the last one, we need to insert it into this little adapter piece, like so. Let's see. Yeah. Why does it feel like I'm inserting it in wrong? There we go. Okay, that's centered. And then we need to get the Boron logo. I printed them, I printed that model. It also has labels you print out for the front. I wish I could share a pic. I'll post in Discord. The, uh, the new Remix model. Where the heck? Oh, there it is. <laughs> like, where did the clear part go? Oops. No, so it has to be this way. And this was printed on the K1. Uh, there we go. K1 Max and then also the P1S and the K1 Max, the outer portion's a little bit tight, but I think we're okay. We'll see if we can get it to go. It might be interesting getting it to drop in here correctly though. So, okay, we got those in. Yeah, let's see if we can get this portion in. Hey, nice, how's it going? Hey, Kenneth. Uh, it sucks even more that Plumbaker Galaxy filaments are not available in Europe when I see that stealth printer body. <laughs> Sorry, somebody commented Somebody commented on the stream before I went live saying, oh, nice, uh, Overture, like, teal sparkly. And I, I didn't reply, but I'm like, oh, okay, so there must be other, they must have their own um, sparkle version. This is going to be fun. I can feel it. This is going to be fun. Only one direction this can go. It looks like it's like this. Oh, there we go. That went in fairly easily, actually. Let me just push down this side. Nice. Wait, yeah, zombie, I asked last week and you had dipped out. Do you have any information on Galaxy coming to Europe? I, I said last week, I was like, if anybody would know, zombie would know. He has some insider info. I've inhaled so much solder fumes during making a drone today that I've practically removed 20 years from my life. That is awful. Is it lead-free solder? I try to only use lead-free solder as much as I possibly can. <clears throat> uh, this is where I broke mine, but managed to mangle it into the slot anyway. Nice. Yeah, haircut. Yep, yep. <laughs> it was It's funny, actually, because the uh, hair salon I go to, their system keeps track of the last time you were in. 
And my goal is to go every 30 days. I feel like by the 30 day mark, my hair grows really quickly. That by 30 days in, usually it's like, all right, we're getting a little rough. And I thought that it had been almost two months since I went in. She said, you haven't been in here since December 2nd. And I was like, oh my God, it's been two and a half months. So yeah, that's, it's, that's probably the longest it's been in a very, very long time. And hats were working pretty well, but the times that I take my hat off, we had like cockatoo going on back here and like, like a boy band, like early nineties boy band to going on here. It was just, <laughs> it was a little, a little much. It's all coming to, okay, sick. It's all coming to the EU. Nice. Hey Nizo, it has been a while. How you doing? That's fantastic news. I figured it had to be like, there's just so much, there's so much demand for uh, that Galaxy series. Okay, so will I have the right amount of slack here? I think I'll start by shoving this into here. Like so. Maybe. Oh, come on. Don't understand why it's fighting me. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and just push this in. I am concerned. I'm concerned whether those solder joints or this wire is gonna hold. I guess the plus side about them using slightly thicker wire is that hopefully, Wait, I'm going the wrong way. I'm going the wrong way. Let's not do that. Okay. Make sure your LED is facing forward. Tight fit. That is, that is never, that is never coming out. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully this, this solder sticks. Otherwise I'm going to be redoing all of this. That was a very tight fit. Hey Benny. Hey Kali. Uh, there's already Galaxy PLA, but no ABS. Oh, nice. Okay. So Galaxy PLA has made its way over there. That's where it all started. So that's, you know, that's a good segue into what's to come. Okay. So we put that in. That was very, very tight. Um, so let's do a little bit more wire management here. Button. <laughs> so yeah, smaller wires and shorter wires. Of course you, you want to make sure you have enough to get to where you need to go, but any excess generally for this stealth burner body is just going to be going to be a fun little, fun little battle. Uh, that's how I felt when building, oh, when building a stealth burner. Yeah, I built now, I mean, I remember the first stealth burner. I was very much like, ah, and I, this has got to be my fourth or fifth stealth burner at this point, but I still, with some of the wiring in here, I'm just like, I, I get why they want to make it so, like, I, I think it's great how they've figured out how to route this and have all these LEDs, but it's, it's certainly a little bit, um, I guess a little tedious getting everything set up correctly in here. There we go. Okay. So those wires are in. I think if I sort of just shove them in this little, there's sort of a little pocket up top here that should be okay. And then I'll route this one, which is going to our PCB up the side here. And then we'll be ready to drop that first fan in. Maybe. Yeah, that looks decent. I'm actually quite pleased, quite pleased with how that turned out. <laughs> it's not bad. Let's see, uh, Sparta has Sparkle ASA and their Sparkle ABS Plus is fantastic. I know Zombies used, um, West 3D has their own line of, I believe it's, I don't know if it's ABS or ASA, but I think it's also sparkly perhaps. And I, I've heard good things about that. 100% just buy a pre-made 
on the wire on the wire harness or I've soldered it a couple of times myself um uh, maybe once actually I think it was the first time we done the stealth burner I soldered it myself and it, it was it was kind of rough part of it was because I didn't have appropriate helping hands we were using VHB tape to hold <laughs> to hold the LEDs in place but yeah it was a little a little rough rotate the fan so the wires exit at the top and that the air is pushed inwards okay so we want this to go like this. <clears throat> so make sure your blades, fan blades are facing forward and that the wires are facing uh, top right. If I remember correctly, I don't think I actually have to pull the wires out. I think that little pocket is enough space for them to sort of exist there. We'll try it. Boom. Yep, that worked. Nice. That looks good. It's called Ambrosia, right? Zombie, that's the that's the West 3D line of filament. I hear Aaron singing Mickey Mouse from downstairs. All right, so that's that. Now the last one is the top fan, which is the fun one, the one we get to do a little bit of surgery on. I mentioned last time that I built this stealth burner that if somebody out there, maybe not now, because who knows when the next version of Boron is going to come out tool wise and make this obsolete, but with the amount of stealth burners that have been built, if somebody manufactured or made a mold for this kind of fan that had the front plate removed and both tabs removed and just sold it as is, I feel like people would pay a premium for that. Uh, Ambrosia is good going to be even better soon. Ooh, insider knowledge, insider knowledge. <laughs> hey Reds, uh, sorry I'm so late. I ordered the new V3. Oh, cool. Core XC Ender. I'm so hyped. It shipped out already. Nice. I think there's a, I have to look. I have an email. So actually that's what I wanted to say. Damn it, I, I want to multitask, but I also want to keep doing the thing. So the there's a couple of printers we're going to be um, unboxing and doing sort of like a first look on stream. So my game plan currently for this build is next week is hopefully our last stream on it. So we should be printing next week. And then I plan on doing one printer unboxing first setup stream. And then a stealth press stream where we'll build a stealth press. Let me throw this in the trash. Well, then one more printer unboxing for sort of hangout stream. And then the next build. Oh, no, no. And then we'll do one more ender wire after that, which will be probably putting the enclosure on it. I want some time printing without the enclosure on it just to get some hours with it, make sure everything's good before I sort of enclose it. And then we'll start the next build thing, which is not set in stone yet on what that will be. There's a few things that just depends. So. I finished my epoxy flooring. Oh, nice. Currently assembling the new workbench. I forgot you were getting that. Take some photos, nice. Um, post them in post them in the live stream uh, channel. Where's my flush cutters? What the heck? Where are the flush cutters? Doo, doo, doo. We went from we went from having comments about the sheer amount of flush cutters I have. Oh, they're right. In front of me, here we go. Uh, I can relate, I'm always all over the place. Think of one thing over <laughs> something else. I was messaging, it's funny, I was messaging Steve. Hey Tajian, I was talking to Steve last night about just that, like the amount of times I say like, oh, I'm gonna go do this one thing and I'll be back in a few minutes. And then it's like, oh shit. <laughs> I think that flew into the window mini blinds. <laughs> Oh, I'll have to vacuum the space after. But yeah, just constant. I feel like it's a fairly relatable thing. He's sort of on your way to do one task. You get side quested and, and the main storyline mission just... Man, this is messy. I, I recommend cutting this somewhere you don't care about plastic flying everywhere because it is absolutely messy. I have about 20. Yeah, I, I had a, a big pile of them. The thing is, I use them for things that they're probably not rated for. So during the move, I was cutting some really heavy duty stuff. And I think I, I lost a few in the battle, um, but yeah, they're super useful to have everywhere. For this build, are you limited by the V6 they give you or can you use any hot end? Oh no, you can use any hot end. 
No, no, you can use any hot end at all. So you're, you're limited if, well, no, if you're printing the part, so hold on. Let me cut a few more pieces out of this and get the file out and all. So you're, if you're printing the parts out yourself, you can print any of the hot end stealth burner attachments. If you're getting the kit that comes with, if you're getting the kit that comes with the printed parts, then you are limited by that bolt pattern. So like dragon style hot end until you, unless you have another printer and you can print out the other hot end attachment points. But yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a, there's no modifications to it in the sense that like, it's just a stealth burner. So you can just swap the hot end, the hot end attachment portion out for any of the other, any of the other options out there that exist. And there's quite a few of them. Uh, hey, Andre, if I, I think I might have said that, but hi, Andre. Hey, Matthew, no worries. We, we're, you're not really late. We're 35 you're 25 minutes earlier than normal. I just had to do earlier, um, earlier stream today. Aaron goes into work a little bit earlier. And so I wanted to make sure we at least got our three hours in and not stress her out by forcing her to be kind of late to work or, you know, rush to work. I don't remember having these notches exactly like this on the other. I mean, I'm sure 5015s are all probably molded to the same exact spec, but this is actually, this one seems a little bit easier to chop up because of how far in these little kind of pocket grooves go. So I also think we need to cut off this little guy. If anyone, I, I think most people have seen the stealth burner by now, but basically for anyone that just is wondering what the heck I'm doing, this is a 5015 blower. It goes into this housing right here, but due to the shape of this housing, you can't have those screw mounting tabs. It's just pressure fit in place. So you need to cut and file those off and also remove the front face plate. It seems sort of intimidating at first, but from my like heavy handing, you know, doing multiple of these knock on wood, I haven't actually damaged one yet, so I, I feel confident that it's they're really not all that fragile. I don't know what they're made out of. Is it just like um is it ABS or like a glass ABS? I, I don't know what what these fans are typically made out of. Okay, let's grab. Got our handy dandy files. Yeah, new studio. It will be, it will be. It, it is nice. A lot more space. I mentioned I've got a bathroom like six feet from my desk, so that's convenient for not getting out of the zone when I'm you know, in an editing session. And then there's a big walk-in closet and it's completely isolated from downstairs. So yeah, it, it's rad. We just need, we just need um, some furniture, <laughs> some furniture and stuff on the wall, but it, it'll, it'll happen. There's just been a lot, a lot of little things that we're still trying to sort of figure out with the place. I posted two pictures when the kids are in bed. I will continue the assembly. Sounds great. I look forward to seeing it. Yeah, a Dremel. I would also recommend using a Dremel over hand tools. Um, I typically don't love using the Dremel inside because of the noise and the mess, but I, I do have like a knockoff Black & Decker style Dremel tool that I could use for this with just a, with just a little um, sanding attachment or cutting wheel, I suppose, to start off. Put a Nami on it, not this one. Usually it's P P B T. What is what does that stand for? P P T. Paul, mm, I, don't, I don't know. Hey, Kellen, thank you very much for becoming a member. Cheers, welcome. Uh, I use my Letterman saw. Works best. I don't even know. I don't know what that is. We started this channel, or I started this channel with like a. Um, a Harbor Freight hammer, that was my only tool. So we've acquired a lot of tools, but I certainly, my dad had some tools. Like I, I remember a few basic tools, like a table saw and a jigsaw. And those were sort of the main things other than obviously like, you know, he had a toolbox of hand tools. He's gotten a few more tools over the years. Like he, he has a miter now and I think a few other, oh, a saw, sawzall. Uh, it's poly, poly, but, butely, tef, okay. I need to use a slightly more aggressive file for this guy. Let's see. Let's pull out the big guns. Um, 
<laughs> it's funny because this this filing set goes from like, okay, like we have a file to file. Let's use this. This is probably now it's triangle. It doesn't have to be super smooth either. You just want to kind of do your best to get it as round as possible. You think it'll fit fine as is? <laughs> I've always gone like real as smooth as sort of I can with it. I might need to chop off also. Let's do a tiny bit more filing on this. I use my Nipix flush cutters on the file on my Leatherman. I've heard really good things about the Nipix flush cutters. In my um, top tool video that I made, there was quite a few people that were talking about the, because I mentioned the Nipix pliers and a few people mentioned the Nipix flush cutters. I think I need to cut off all of these little tabs actually. Okay, so let's zoom out a little bit. I don't have a trash can yet in this room, so we're currently, <laughs> we're using moving box. <clears throat> I just don't want all of this, all of these little plastic, even though I, I shot a bunch of them across the room, but let's not intentionally add more to the floor. There we go. Okay. Ah, Nipix are the best. Yeah, they were pricey. I snip it off and shove. That's it, really? Snip, the old snip and shove. <laughs> yeah, I've always filed. I don't mind, I, I don't know. I guess if it's not needed, maybe there's no point, but I don't mind a little, a little filing. You guys recommended I buy a full file set. So this is the one time every couple months when we build, <laughs> we build something, I get to use them. All right, so we are just going to shove this part in and it's going to break, uh, it's gonna break a tab that is right here, um, which is intended to break it. So we will, and also I think, do I need to move? I can't remember in this one, I think I might need to pull the wires up. It doesn't say. No, it looks like there's, there's actually a little indentation for the wires, so it should be. Okay, shoving it in. Boom. We are in. It looks great. It looks really, really nice. What did I, what did I, what did I miss? KT Kevin, thanks. Hopefully my bot sees. When did, what did I miss? All right, let's, let me. What did I miss? K2, K2. How come I don't see? Oh, oh, here we go. Uh, hey, thanks for the initial design of the hardware organizer. I remastered one to utilize your change yours and layout. You did a fabulous job. Yeah, we were just talking about that. I saw you added some really nice quality of life improvements. I, I think I made that thing like two years ago. And honestly, it was one of those things where one of the biggest, one of the biggest gripes I had with the V0 build or yeah, just a full build like that, which I hadn't done in many, many years was the lack of organization. And so, I was like, you know what? And, and I don't like the standard off the shelf screw organizers because the bins are super flimsy. And if it falls over, then they're, there's, they're not like, the slots they go into aren't perfect squares. They have like openings to probably save cost. I don't know. Uh, and so I, I modeled one up and I was like, oh, I'll share it. I had no idea that there would be so many people using it. So um, yeah, I'm, I can't, it kind of took on a life of its own and, um, I probably should have <laughs> revisited it at some point, but I'm glad that others have. And some of the stuff that you did, I definitely think makes for a nicer experience and adds on to some of the sort of basic functionality of it. So yeah, great job with that design. Let's see, great color choice. Thank you, Bardicus. This, the colors were, were voted on by, by chat. We um, pointed, pointed at the wall of filament in the last place. And I said, all right, let's go through. And I think there was 40 colors or something like that. And this is, there was, it was between this and there was also another, there was also another one that I think had neon green or pop, pop green or neon green and then something else, but we opted for this. Uh -uh. 
I'm a tool hoarder, so this probably is pretty skewed, but a lot of tools I infrequently use, I look at as sort of an investment into the possible better solution. Wait, wait, I'm a tool hoarder, so this probably is pretty skewed, but a lot of tools I inf... Okay, so things you don't use, I look as this sort of investment of the possible solutions to a problem in the future. Gotcha. I, I'm sort of, so for power tools, I have pretty much settled on Ryobi. I know that, man, Ryobi seems to get just absolute dunked on as far as from tool people, but their tools have been fantastic for all the things I've done. Like I'm, I'm not a, you know, contractor. I'm using them for the occasional DIY stuff and things around the house and for the price and selection they have, and I'm already pretty deep into their battery ecosystem. I don't have any complaints at all. Um, I will say though that G funny, uh, who is, hasn't been around nearly as much the last probably 12 months, but it was a really active member on here. It sent me a Milwaukee, it's like a core, it's, I think they call it like a screwdriver, but it's, it's got power. Like I've used it to tap threads. I've used it for all sorts of things and it's real compact. And, um, that's an awesome tool. I think it's part of the, it's the M12 series is what they call it. I'm doing pop blue and neon green. Oh, pretty. Yeah, those are those are cool colors. Okay, so all I did was take two M36. Uh, I goofed, didn't I? I wasn't supposed to install those until I put the freaking board in. Or no, no, is it a two-piece board on this? I can't remember actually. I think I did goof. Yeah, I must have goofed. So let's go back to that. That was part of the official Voron assembly manual, but we need to go to the Cyborg assembly. There we go. So. This is where my mistake was made. We need to put this PCB on where I put those two screws right now. So let's undo those. It looks like we're still using M36s, but they say to use button heads instead of instead of these flat heads. You have the batteries and they're fine tools. Yeah, I've got, I think, like six or seven other batteries. The three of them are, are or three or four of them are pretty low. Um, capacity but which is fine for like hey hun i need you to hang up something on the wall like you know not needing it for long periods of time and then i've got three that are a little bit heavier duty which are nice for like the orbital sander or something like that like i, I have two skill saws from them i think one's a one's maybe a 10 inch or 12 inch and one's a smaller six or eight and the the bigger one's wired the smaller one's cordless and i thought to myself like cute i'll never need this but i've actually used that really small wireless um uh, skill saw a few times. Okay, so this is going to be interesting because I think this is where I was told that the fittings don't match the board they send you with. So let me move this out of the way. Here we go. <clears throat> Here we go. This is where Jamie came in last build and, and saved us on the Trident. So this is the piece that's going here. Uh, that connector looks okay. That connector looks okay. No, these connectors look okay. I mean, it could be the other, perhaps it was the other board that you're referring to. So we will align this. Let me get you guys. I still don't have the overhead camera set up and it probably won't be installed for a bit because since I'm getting a second workbench, I don't know which one I'm gonna make the primary and not or how, like, it's easy enough for me to move the primary, like the me camera and the side camera around since we're just on tripods. But before I drill something into the ceiling, I really want to think about it. And I'm also debating on having, I mean, like getting some kind of a 20, 40, 20 or 20, 40 extrusion and having the, the top camera on wheels. So that way, if like one week I'm working over here, but then I'm in the middle of a project. So we stream over there. I, I don't know, I, I, but anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Not the connectors, just the female pins for... Oh, gotcha. Okay. Do the IKEA pegboards arrive yet? No. March... I think March 15th is the earliest delivery. I checked to see if maybe someone canceled, so I checked for updated delivery, and the next... If I cancel my delivery or try to change it, the earliest is now like April 13th, so I am leaving... I am leaving it where it's at. Okay, so it says M36 button heads. So that's what we'll try to use. Build a robot arm to hold your camera from the roof. Yeah, that'd be legit. You should do a rail that you can move it. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, the only thing is with a rail, I would need, there's, I actually had them, when they built this, since this was a new build, I was able to do some, some stuff that 
um, <laughs> they said they hadn't really done before, but I had them install power switches in the ceilings. <laughs> so I have the ability to power it, and there's one over here and there's one on the other side, because in my mind I was like, cool, we'll have two setups in here, but the HDMI cable that's gonna have to run is gonna have to be like crazy long to stretch to the PC, so we'll see. It might not be super practical to, maybe like one of them has to be the dedicated streaming setup and one has to be, like the other one can be a secondary studio set. <laughs> Okay. All right, let's finally get this piece in. It feels like they went with a crazy long wire for the for this fan. I'm, I'm tempted to shorten some of these wires. I'm actually tempted to just solder these wires. Part cooling fan, hot end fan, I I'm tempted to solder this. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to I'm going to screw these in and then I'm probably going to quickly cut the wires and solder them because this is this is like this part cooling fan just needs to plug in here. That is a ton of slack. I can cut it down to like you know, right here and quickly install them. If you use the connectors, you need to do maintenance or for a failed fan, it's faster. <laughs> uh, in Inheritance Machining has a video on dolly tracking for ceiling or grid systems so you can hang lights as well. I'll have to check that out. Can you can you message me that somewhere else? Lisa, but I don't. I don't forget. Uh, HDMI. Hey, Iconic, how's it going? Get a power cord reel. Oh, that's cool. You mean so I can just pull the power and it sort of feeds it to different places or like it retracts? Okay, so let's unplug these. Should have probably done that before I put these in, in place. There's one. Yeah, I don't know that we can even use these as is. I think I have to. Wow, that is stuck. Wow, why is that so stuck? I am at a loss. This little, this connector, this JST connector is really stuck in there. All right, I'm gonna use these, <laughs> these, these guys to grab it. I don't, I don't understand why they're stuck in so hard. <clears throat> there's, there's no way I'm going to break the thing. Um, I'll see if I've got something better to grab them with. Cause those are going to, if I put any more pressure, I'll cut through. We got needle nose pliers somewhere or tweezers. Man, these needle nose pliers suck. Yeah, it's gonna damage it. I, I don't understand. Let's take the, I should just take the whole thing off and grab it from both sides. Tiny flat had to push on the tabs. Ceiling grids are rather common in studios. Let's see you reattach lights, cams pretty much anywhere you want. Yeah, the only downside to this room is that um, the ceilings aren't very tall. So it kind of limits, it kind of limits. I don't even have something small enough to press down on those tabs. I seriously think I'm going to end up soldering this. I'm just going to yank one sec. Did you forget that the home inspector was coming by today? Yeah. Okay, because he wants to climb up on our roof and check the patio. 
Yeah, is that okay? Yeah, I just wanted to let you know that you can hear so I can see. Somebody up top. Okay, I got an email from him, but I haven't read it because I've been so busy. <laughs> so, okay, thank you for letting me know. Okay. You let him in? Or you let him do his thing? Yeah. Okay, cool, thank you. He's already putting the ladder up, so you're probably going to see him. You talked to him, right? Uh, I'm through the rain. Oh, okay, can you take the dogs out? Because I'm going to freak out otherwise. Thank you, sorry about that. He's ready for a nap too, so. Okay, I'll be Jack Jack. I use tweezers to wiggle mine for you. The fly had to push. Yeah, I'm gonna end up. I'm gonna end up soldering this, guys. Thank you. There's a. Right, so there, we had the inspection done on the house. I, I got I hired a third party inspector, and so a couple things. One, um, these are JST, I think PH, and they're not. They're definitely not the worst to crimp, but I don't enjoy crimping them. For me, it's it's easier to just quickly solder them. And if I have to remove a fan, I can just quickly disconnect these pads, so. Dogs are gonna be also freaking out, but hopefully the filter will do a good enough job to, <clears throat> to sort of block that out. But yeah, that's, that's what I was saying. We had an inspector, but it was, we had so much snow. It was, it was probably a month a month and a month ish ago and it was when we had that big downpour of snow and so the roof wasn't able to get inspected and so I had scheduled something else or scheduled him to come back out for the roof inspection and apparently I forgot that it was today. And also this does not lay down flush. This doesn't lay down flush because of the... Someone mentioned to me this one time that you can like cut part of the fan to make it lay down flush. Let me just, I'm gonna loosen it a hair because it's, it's a little bit more crooked than I would like. I think that's fine. Um, Jack-Jack's doing pretty good. So, he... Yeah, he's doing pretty good. He's handled it really well. He likes that there's a lot of space for him to sort of run around and, or I guess not run around, but he, he kind of runs. He's got his little wheel, his little wheel mobile thing. And um, yeah, he's got his, well, he had his own room before, but he's doing great. I don't, I don't think there's been much negative when it comes to Jack. The biggest thing is just sort of the stairs. I have to get a baby gate installed at the bottom of the stairs because he can climb up the stairs and that is a recipe for a disaster. So yeah, we need to do that and a few other things, but overall he's doing good. For humor, there is also the talking hands channel. <laughs> Thanks for asking. He's, he's almost one. He turns one on March 5th, so it's almost Jack's birthday. We're not doing a whole lot. Aaron works, but we are gonna get him uh, like a cupcake and some kind of a banner and I'll figure out, I'll find some toy, <laughs> some toy to get him. But I remember my parents told me that they went all out for my first birthday and I hated it. <laughs> they said, they said they invited like a bunch of their friends over and had this whole big thing. And I just cried the whole time. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I mean, we, all of our family, my parents, my grandparents, or my parents, his grandparents, we're out here for three weeks while we were moving, so they got to spend a bunch of time with them, but we've got no family out here right now. And so it would be, it's basically, even if we wanted to do a bigger thing, it'd be, it'd be tough. Okay, I'll, I'll take a photo. <laughs> I'll take a photo. Uh, where's my soldering iron? I know I've got it somewhere. There it is. <laughs> yeah, he's been awesome. He's been eating like crazy. He's He's like uh, doing all sorts of head, he, I, I talked about it last week a bit, I think, but he head bobs now. So he's like, <laughs> we, we had on, I think it was like alternative rock or something like that. What am I looking for? I'm looking for the brass mesh stuff. We had some rock on the other night for dinner and he was just head bobbing to it, which was <laughs> hilarious. Uh, let's see, if you're going to use the Omron, I advise you do not, it's just bad in all measures. What, um, what? Did you use the Omron on the same Enderwire build or was it on a Switchwire? Because I, I used the Omron only in one other build. It was the original Switchwire build I did. And 
it was awful. But after talking to Steve, I think it might have been, I think it might have, one sec, part cooling fan. Okay, I've got hot end fan, I've got RGB, and there's two things up here, which we don't, so we're just going with the other ones. Um, he thinks that it may have something to do with the embedded magnets that are on the LDO slash like Prusa style beds. So because this kit is using the Ender 3 bed, which is just a like mag, mag bed or whatever, you know, like, I don't know, fridge magnet style, I'm curious to see how it performs. But if it doesn't perform well, then we'll either, I mentioned it, we'll either go with Clicky or we'll end up going with the Eddy probe whenever, oops, whenever that ends up releasing. We talked about Eddie, the Eddy probe two couple weeks ago and I mentioned that I would reach out to them and ask if there was any update. And I did reach out and did ask if there was any update. And there was, there was the Chinese holiday and um, there was a Chinese holiday. Yeah, I think it was the Chinese New Year, right? The big holiday. Oh, he's walking outside the window. <laughs> Trip out. And, and I just got a response and my response was pretty uneventful. It's basically, I'll update you and I have any info. I don't have any info. So I've got, I've got, oops, I've got nothing to share regarding the status of the Eddy probe from Big Tree Tech because they did not provide me with any info. So, okay, so let's route these. Uh, Rat Rig also, yeah, I did see that Rat Rig had a camera slider. That's pretty freaking cool. Maybe, maybe there's a collab opportunity there. Um, Okay, so I want to give myself plenty of wire to get to where I need to go because that'd be a disaster, but I don't want any extra really, so we'll cut you right there. And for you, we'll do a similar thing. Uh, we'll cut you right about... Where's, where's my... Oh. <laughs> right in front of me. Cut you right about there. That should be enough. And for you, we don't need very much at all, so we'll cut you right about there. Cool. Hey, what's up, Luke? Happy Wednesday. Uh, let me catch up on the chat really quick. Uh, oh no, a, a baby headbanger. <laughs> uh, on a cyborg underwire, okay. Yeah, we'll give it a go. If it ends up sucking, then I will absolutely swap it out. I have not had a good experience with it. I haven't used it on any other uh, builds because of my terrible first experience. But yeah, after talking with, after talking with Steve about it, I at least want to give it an initial go to sort of just see if it is any better, if it is any better than the previous experience I had. The bar is set pretty low. Crap. Where is, okay. I might have to run downstairs and do a quick search for where my my wire snippers are. I installed a ring uh, flood cam, and as part of that, there I had to drill a hole through the garage to the inner garage, and then I had to take an AC wire and basically strip back the wire on it to expose the uh, live neutral earth, and I don't know what the heck I did with the wire stripper after that. So let me do one quick round in here. I have a lighter, so if worse comes to worse, I could burn off the ends. Um, I don't see it. It's bright orange, so it should be yelling at me. I don't see it. Where is it? Okay, let me run downstairs and see if I see it. If I don't see it, I'm probably just going to use a lighter on the ends of the wires and, and burn and pull the pull the ends off. But hopefully it's, it's there, because I know... Oops, don't burn myself. I know when I used it last, so I'll be right back. Let me put this off and I will be right back.
<laughs> I found it. It was right where I left it. <laughs> Should have taken the mic. <laughs> I think it does reach downstairs. I took, it, I took it off because I didn't know if I was going to run into the inspector and have to talk or something. Okay. Oop, let's go back to the side view. The music stop? It did. Let's see. I'm going to put you to the likes. Ooh, we got 65 likes. Let's see if we can hit 100. I, I believe we're going to, um, in 25 minutes also, we're going to open up the giveaway here for some Polymaker filament. Let's see. Music. There we go. Okay. Let's do it. How did Monkey and Delilah do with the move? They've done okay. So that was one of the things I was going to mention. Um, as part of, like, new construction, you have to pay for your fence separate from your mortgage. And we're lucky that we're on the end of a street, so the builder pays for one side, but we have to pay for the other side, and it's supposed to be split with your neighbor, but our neighbor doesn't move in for two months. Anyways, the whole long thing. Um, in the back, we did not get any landscaping in the backyard um, because... I just, I didn't, I wanted a blank slate and I didn't want to spend the money to be quite frank with you right now. And the, um, the issue with, with it, which it couldn't, it didn't take a genius to tell me, right? I should have known, but basically it's a muddy backyard plus rain plus dogs equals disaster. And so like a week and a half after we moved in, we ordered a ton of rock from a local, um, <clears throat> like a local yard that just has a bunch of different landscape, hard, hardscape stuff. So they dumped, I think it was 14 cubic yards of rock in the front yard. And my parents helped a ton. I put down all the ground cover. My parents helped a ton with wheeling back and forth rock. So now they have a small little section of the backyard where they can go and, and you know, use the restroom and, and such when without getting uh, mud everywhere. But the, we wanted to get a small, we wanted to get a small gate put in or like gate slash fence. So like the primary fence is a six foot and we wanted to branch off a small four footer to give them that corner where they can not be on a leash and they can run around and not try to get out or chase neighbor dogs or whatever. Cause monkey, monkey's a, an aggressive dog. So we really have to be careful with him. And I was under the assumption that a third of the fence would probably be somewhere around a third of the cost. It's, it's also, it's, so I think the original fence is 150 foot long. And this one was only going to be 41 feet. And so, oops, I had them come out and, you know, measure it and then give me a quote. And it was $2,300 for this 41 foot long, four foot tall fence. And I, I was anticipating it like, like to me, high was going to be around a thousand dollars. And so when we got the price, I thought it was a, I thought it was a mistake. I messaged the, the fence company back and said like, there's gotta be, this has got to be a joke. Like, what am I missing? And no, it's just smaller job. They charge more. And so now I don't know what the heck we're going to do with the dogs because I'm, we can't, I, I told, I told the fence guy, I said, man, if it was like $800 or a thousand dollars less, I could flirt with the idea. I'm like, I can't even entertain that. Yeah. So I'm thinking about potentially doing it myself. I watched some videos on vinyl fencing and it's basically dig some holes, make sure the posts are square, get everything put in place, get a bag of like pre-mixed concrete, add some water, pour it in. But the issue I'm running into now is that when I'm looking at prices of raw vinyl fence, the, the primary one that I see that's like the best deal seems like it's called Freedom Freedom Fence from, I think it's Lowe's that's the main reseller. And it's not cheap. <laughs> it's, it's still not cheap. Like just to get the four footer in what we need, it's probably like $1,200 in, in raw material. Um, so I don't know, again, back to, I don't know what we're gonna do. <laughs> the dogs are doing good, but I'd love to be able to give them the ability to sort of run around their own little area of the yard, you know, not be con confined to, to their leash the whole time. So you got me listening to this music in the car, speed, speed boost, hills make driving. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I think they didn't fix the STL for the self burner cover. It's for a stock self burner. Wait, for what part of the cover? My dog goes now barking to know. <laughs> Sorry, Dominic. I ha uh, I also had no yard when I moved in my city for two years. <laughs> yeah, we, we've got the rock now, which looks nice. I still need to put in quite a bit more. And then I've got my eyes on a, 
a, it's like a round paver slash fire pit kit that I'm hoping to install during summer, but I'm gonna do that myself. I watch tons of videos on it. It doesn't require any concrete. It's basically me just getting more rock delivered and making sure that the pavers are, are flat and uh, then using some, I think it's like construction or concrete um, uh, adhesive for the top top layer. So I'll try to do that myself, but I don't know. <laughs> it's been a lot. Electric fences were great. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> it's been so wet here in Oregon that my dogs have destroyed a good part of the lawn. Every day I'm mopping up. Oh gosh. Yeah, the, the rocks have been awesome. Uh, right now we've probably only got about an inch and a half of rock cover, but there's still a ton of rock in the driveway that the weather's been rough. So I haven't been able to get out there and, and um, move any more rock. But when we get a when we get a nicer day, I definitely will. Okay, let me see if I can find some tweezers. Oh, nice. I got tweezers. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to start with the... I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. Let me see if I can move you guys a little bit. There we go. There we go. I'll do it. I'll, uh, I do it myself. I'm not handy, and I put one in. Oh, you, a fence? It was also it was also um, vinyl fence. Did you concrete? Did you do concrete as well? Some places I've seen they're like. We oh. die hearing the doorbell. Um, building a fence could be content. <laughs> I would never get the fence built if we did, if we tried to live stream the process. I would spend the entire time being like, look, there's an actual squirrel. <laughs> okay, so let's move the wires we don't need out of the way, or attempt to. Let's not burn myself either. need to go help Aaron with the dogs. Yeah, let me go check. One sec. Let me go check on Aaron. Oh, she said she's good. I hear Jack crying and the dogs are barking, but that was my bad. I saw I got the email from them, but I thought the email was confirming a date and I didn't realize, I didn't realize that date was today. Uh, I used to know someone who had an invisible electric fence for their dog and she just never understood. Oh, that sounds awful. Yeah, I used to work at, I used to work at PetSmart. Um, it was a really fun job. And we had, we had invisible fences there. I don't know if they were, Electric it is not very pretty wash solder job. I don't know if they were electric fences. I think some of them they had like, it just sort of vibrated. Okay, that sucks. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into super focus mode for like three minutes here while I try to do this. And I might just, I'm gonna use my hands. I think I'm having a harder time with the tweezers to feel where the wires are going. So bear with me. These are just RGB wires too, so it's not like they're anything super crazy. Five volts is in, let's get the blue one. This is our RGB wire. There we go. Our ground wire, just tinning the, putting a little more solder on the iron. Sorry, I wish I could give you, I know you guys are probably just looking at my hands right now, but I don't really have an option to give good view. Okay, so there's that. Let's clean more, clean our iron off. Okay, one fan wire's in. Did 
definitely easier with uh, using your hands versus trying to use tweezers. I just I had a hard time getting a feel. It looked like the wire was laying down, but then I'd solder and it wasn't. Okay, 24 volts here. Hopefully I, hopefully I um, do it correctly. I don't know if you guys remember on the, I think it was the Trident build, I soldered it off stream and I, I goofed, I swapped around, uh, swapped around something. Oh, that's not good. There we go. There we go. Okay. We should be good. I'm going to unplug this iron. Whew. I'll get caught up really quick on chat. I'll show you guys the sort of shoddy, shoddy solder job, but it, it's fine. Morning all. Hey, Deanna. You're not, well, you're, you're a little late, <laughs> but technically only 15 minutes if it was normal stream time. We just start early. We built our fence in Colorado, but it was wood. Yeah, an invisible. Um, the, the house that we rented at for the first 18 months had a wood fence, and I will never do a wood fence. Uh, my parents' house in California has had a wood fence for the entirety of them living there, so 33, 34 years. But the weather is mild. We don't get snow, it doesn't get below freezing point, while here, from the rain and the freezing, the every single year, like the a certain amount of posts get destroyed from water getting in the wood, and then it freezing, it expanding, and just completely splitting the wood. So I, I definitely want to go with the vinyl. Well, we don't have a choice in this neighborhood because it's it's um it's there's a HOA. I mean, every new neighborhood out here has got some form of HOA. But regardless, I wouldn't I wouldn't want wood based off what I've seen. Uh, you should know someone who had a visible, uh, uh, maybe, maybe that is what you should do. Make a video about building a fence with 3D printed helpers and get a sponsor to help with material. Not an awful idea. I thought about doing something like that with the epoxy. I just didn't have time to sort of put it all together. Normally one would have a plank here. I, however, get distracted and tackle <laughs> this piece of pie. Get Paul to make a sponsor 3D printed fence. Building fence part two, finalizing concrete and starting gates. <laughs> I build a wood fence to contain our daughter when she was young. She's farming now. The fence is still there. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, do you have a list of affiliate links? I thought you had more than Polymaker. I do not have a list, and I should. Lisa told me like a year and a half ago to create a channel on the Discord with affiliate links. So if someone wants to purchase something, they can check there if they want to support the channel too. I need to do that. I'm going to do that. I have no reason not to. I don't push affiliate links like ever really. And, and I think that there's certain situations where I should at least have them accessible at the very least. I, I need to I need to be a little bit better because it does really help the channel. The, you know, someone just buying something that they were gonna buy, it doesn't make any difference to them, but it does help the channel and me being able to continue doing what I do, so. Uh, uh, is it Cries or Chris? I don't know if it's Cries or, I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm gonna go with Cries. I'm gonna go with Cries. <laughs> Thank you very much for the three, is it three months? I can't see the logo. It looks like three, maybe two. Thank you very much. Hey, Steve. Wooden fences in Colorado take a beating. Yeah. Do you not have pressure treated wood as an option? I, I don't know fences. They probably do. Hey, Ulrich. Hey, Phil. Morning. Hey, Simon. It's Chris. Dang it. I was wrong. Sorry, Chris. I'll remember for the next time. Sorry about that. Okay. Let's show you, let's show you this real quick and let's get this dang thing installed, man. So this is what we've got. Everything looks like it's in the right place. Red from part cooling fan. Nope. Hot end fan. Yeah, that one. So red from hot end fan. Black is um, going to the hot end fan pin. We've got ground RGB and five volts from our uh, RGB array. And then we've got 24 volts and um, black going to the part cooling fan for the part cooling fan. So everything looks good. We didn't go with the, the wires that they had on here were super long. You probably could have, you probably could have messed around with them and figured out a way to get them to stick in there, but I would rather not. It, it was just too much length in my opinion. So hopefully this will make it where um, getting it fed on to the tool head is going to be a little bit easier. Let's quickly tuck these wires in. Yeah, I just, I don't like having a lot of excess wire in the stealth burner. I think it's such a tight sort of setup as is. 
Oh, that, see that's not good. I don't want the wire going down into the fan. That will be a problem shortly here. Okay, so what I think I need to do is pull... Let's not pull on the solder joint, but let's pull on these wires. Keeping my thumb on the solder joint to not put strain on them as I do this. Okay, doesn't look like it's hitting... Doesn't look like it's hitting our fan blade. And I should be able to just tuck this wire sort of like that. Oh, you guys can't see, what the heck? Sorry. Hey Thomas, how's it going? Pressure treated wood is just really standard in Canada and it lasts fine. It's only untreated wood that gets destroyed in my experience. Interesting. That's cool. Yeah, I, I guess they don't use pressure treated wood. I, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I know that, I think uh, Steve Steve has been working on his shed install and I know that he actually mentioned that he got some, for part of the foundation, he used some pressure treated wood. So I don't know, I don't have the answer to that, but I, I would certainly say I don't think that's what they're using. <clears throat> I don't think that's what they're using because the wood's getting destroyed every year, like I mentioned, so. All right, this needs to go. Oh, crap, tell me I printed out the, Tell me I print it out. There it is. Yes. I wasn't sure if I printed out the little standoff for the PCB. Okay. So we're gonna take our little standoff. We're gonna take, this is the other part of our PCB. And then we're using M36 button heads, which I believe I took out. Can these little guys be yeah. off? Any fencing? should you pressure treat for at least yeah maybe the posts so maybe they pressure treat the posts if i go i need to go back to the rental one more time well we're doing our final walkthrough on saturday morning so i need to go back there though one day before to throw some stuff out from the garage and if if i remember i will snap a photo of the fence for everybody so we can we can see what the deal is Rate my fence. <laughs> okay. This doesn't seem right. Yeah, that's definitely not right. These say these say M three six. These need to be M three eights. I'm just gonna show this. Cyber's been watching these videos, so I wouldn't be surprised if they update it, but that's all it sticks through on an M36, so we definitely need M3 by 8, so that way we've got some threads to go into the heat inserts on that printed part. Any wood that has contact with soil should be pressure treated. Okay, so that's probably that's probably the case then. The posts are likely um, pressure treated, but the actual, like, I don't know, panels or whatever you'd call them, are, are not. I don't see how they could be. They, someone, there's defective, and it can't be... Uh, do we have M3 8 here? We got socket heads. Will socket heads work? I don't see why not. <clears throat> we'll try socket heads here. Um, it's not just the house that we're renting. There's like every year in the neighborhood, I always see a bunch of a bunch of houses that have different colored wood because they had to be replaced. Where? There. Okay, it looks like socket heads are gonna work totally fine. So if you have this kit and you don't have spare button heads anywhere, just use, use M3 by eight millimeter socket heads. Okay. 
The key's to clean and seal it at least every two years. Well, that, that could be it too then. That, I mean, I know I, I certainly, I lived there for 18 months and I certainly didn't seal them in the 18 months I lived there. And nobody, nobody came through and did it. I would, I would have known. Okay, so we are, I don't know how well you can see this. Can you zoom out a little bit maybe? So we're attaching this board. Okay, we should be ready to mount this, I believe, at least. Let's see. Yeah, let's mount this. Okay, cool. Let's move this stuff out of the way. Move this out of the way. You guys can go in here for now. Ender 3 Switchfire kit from Cyborg as well, but unfortunately ordered shortly before Change New Year, so it hasn't been out yet. I'm hyped. Oh, nice. They should be back as of this week, I'm pretty sure. Have you gotten any update? They probably, I would imagine they have a pretty crazy backlog just from being out for, I think it was, was it two weeks, roughly? Um, our neighbor and I rented a power post hole digger to do both of our fences and had a pallet of concrete bags delivered to set them. That's awesome. Yeah, I did some landscaping with my dad, uh, gosh, 15-ish years ago. And we, I think I already set the probe to the correct height. And we, sorry. We rented an auger is what it was called. And we used that to dig pretty big holes for all the plants. But for this, if I end up doing this this uh, fence myself, since it's only, since it's only, sorry, <laughs> multitasking. Um, how is this slot on here? Oh, it slots, in, it's in front of it, right? Okay, that's right, this drops down. Am I doing this backwards? What am I doing here? This is the front of the printer. This looks like it needs to slot in right there, but it's definitely not going to slot in right there. Okay, there we go, there we go. So it rests, it rests on these bolts is what it looks like. This drops down like that. And now I can see the screw hole that this needs to go into. So let me try to show that. Um, I brain fired on what I was saying. <laughs> I think I said, I think I was saying that because this is only 43 feet or something like that, I, I'm just going to try to dig the post holes myself. If I even end up, I don't know what the heck I'm going to do again. It's the game plan. So because of the shape of this, this piece here, I was thinking it slotted into right here, but it doesn't. It sort of just sits. This is, okay, this is what slots into there ever so slightly. And then these, these guys rest on top of the screws here. So like that. I, don't, I do, I've done quite a few stealth burners, but apparently not enough to remember, <laughs> to remember this. Um, in the middle of sourcing my switch wires since I already had a bunch of the parts on hand. Nice. Are you doing, oh, so you're doing not an ender wire conversion? It's, it's a full switch wire build. Uh, we'll upgrade it to a Nami V2 and some LDO speedy. Ooh, cool. I'm curious how the speedy powers will work. Okay, so this one screw fastens this in place. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, yeah, it's going right in. No, it's not. I'm incorrect. I don't see how... 
something is off and I'm not exactly sure what. This wire, I mean, this wire for the um, <clears throat> the probe is definitely beefier, but it should still fit. And it looks like God, this is right. I just don't. I don't remember ever having an issue with this before. Is it just like no? I'm confused. I'm very confused. It does slot in, gotta smash it in a little. It looks so wrong. Okay, so you're saying that this piece does slot into that. I mean, they're the same shape, it just doesn't look right. Let's see. Oh my gosh. Wait, did we get it now? I don't see how it's possible. Oh, wait, no, you're right, you're right. Okay. There we go. Okay, it does slot in. I didn't realize that there was a wider section in the back. Okay, we're lined up. <laughs> that was that was a lot tougher. I, I don't, again, I, this was printed on the K1 Max, so I, I'm gonna potentially blame it on tolerances, but that was a lot tougher uh, than I recall having to do it before. Thank you, Defense. You gave me the, the reassurance and the confidence I needed to just <laughs> shove shove the part down. Now this lines up and this will hold it in place. Perfect. Okay, we are in, there we go. Let's see, I am mixed. Talk to, the, uh, talk to a fencing company about doing a sponsored video on your channel. You make them 3D printed helpers, you get fenced for free. <clears throat> well, the, the fencing company wouldn't I don't think the fencing company would do like a paid install. Maybe send some fencing out. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I have to figure out like the plane. I, maybe it's not. It's not a bad idea, Lisa. I just have to figure out how to sort of incorporate that all together into one. Order the kit as well as the CNC tab will arrive Friday. Uh, what what kit, Dane? I'm looking at getting a Trident kit at some point. Still learning about 3D printing. Hope to get my syllable and clothes so I can print ABS next next month. Nobody seems to have kits in stock at the moment. Nobody has kits for trading kits in stock? <clears throat> That's awesome. The Sobo should be able to do it. Is it the SV06 or what's the Sobo you have? Uh, I asked Emma and, and they apologized and said that they have a lot to do, but we'll send it out soon. So I'll be patient, I think. Okay, awesome. Yeah, Emma's fantastic. So I'm sure they're doing their best. The squirrel's buried all past self <laughs> That's exactly right. <clears throat> Full switch wire turning my ender into a belt printer. Nice, that's awesome. What motors are you using for your AB? You mean the, on this, the XZ? These are the Cyborg included ones. <clears throat> so I don't know that they actually have a name. Do they just say Cyborg? Uh, you can probably not read that. It says Cyborg motor. So 42 STH40, 204A, I mean four amp. <clears throat> and then for the Y motor, I'm using a 40, 42, 40? It's a Creality motor. <clears throat> it was tight on my parts, uh, printed on a, okay, cool. It was so it was tight then. I just don't remember it being that tight previously. <laughs> and if our conversion is a Tinker's mod, it's way too expensive in both time and money to be worth the limited performance gains. It's a really fun build. I, I really enjoy it. But yeah, I, I do think that you have to enjoy modding to build an, um, to build a switch wire. Otherwise, I'd probably opt for a Core XY. I would definitely opt for a Core XY. But I really like the printer. I think it's super capable and gorgeous looking as well. Okay, let's try to make a little... Oh, it's time to open the... Let me open up the giveaway link really quick here. <clears throat> Let's see, 91 likes. If we if we can get to, let's see if we can get to 130 likes before the giveaway in half an hour here. Mm -mm -mm. I need to get better at remembering it or have something on screen that reminds me. Let's see. 
Okay, form is in chat. I'm gonna pin it. Last week I forgot. Pin message. There we go. Okay. Okay, so we need to install one more screw on the other side. It looks, no, I am wrong about that. <laughs> it's the same side. It's just, it's the opposite side. So through here, I forgot they, didn't you used to attach it from the back? Was it clockwork one? I feel like there was at one point you were attaching it from the back. So motors from the kit. Yeah, I ordered one more of the bigger Crowley motors that was used for the extruder, self source my underwire parts before the kit was out. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm just using what was in the kit, except for the, um, again, the, went with the beefier motor and then a few mods, like this is different. The motor mounts are different. The Y motor is different. There's a couple other things that I did. I have to look. I posted all the mods that I'm using on this in the live stream channel on the Discord. So if you go there, I think it was last week that someone had requested them. So you just scroll up a bit, you should be able to see them all. Okay, where that's in place now. Oh, dropping you guys. <clears throat> okay, tool cartridge mounting. Magic Phoenix kits are good, LDO and other premium parts where it matters. Unless... I, I think Magic Phoenix kits, I think I've heard of them fairly, fairly recently, aren't they? Aren't they pretty affordably priced, but have, I know you mentioned some LDO stuff, but like I, th I think for the components, they look like a solid option. I just, I've never used them and I, I don't know a whole lot about them. Okay, so this is slotting up into here. I think I need to loosen these screws a bit. And even the, um, looks like the thermistor wires are pretty damn long. I don't know. I don't know if I'll shorten them in this case. I might just tuck them, but I wish the wires were a little bit shorter. Okay. So these sort of alignment screws, I'm not trying not to over tighten them. I, I definitely did too much. You almost want these alignment screws loose, I feel like. It, it's really tricky to, there we go. Okay, there we go. I should have pushed up harder. There's one, I'm just gonna tighten them a little bit. What Voron do you recommend for my first form build or should I fold out for Phoenix? Phoenix is a gnarly, hey Ryan, from SoCal, my old, my, my neighborhood or my, my home turf. Um, <clears throat> I feel like Phoenix is going to be a gnarly first build and just in the scale of it. If it were me, I'm doing a video on it, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. I think the Trident is likely my favorite Voron or my most recommended if someone's like, hey, I just need one Voron that's not a small Voron. <clears throat> that's what I would recommend. I think you, you, the build's a bit simpler. The gantry's rigid. <clears throat> the inverted electronics mod is super cool because of the fact that the bed's not down low. And it's a little bit cheaper than the 2.4 because there's less components. So I, that's going to be my, that's going to be my, mac, uh, my, my, mac, my recommendation. Uh, hello from M Mandaria Island. That is awesome. I'm going to, we'll do a cheer for Mandaria Island. Welcome. I start my 250. Oh, that's going to be a fun, that's going to be a fun build. What's your, what's your setup like for that PF? Like what, what's specs is it is it just is an ldo kit or is it what's the hot end and the board and the leveling setup you're using for that okay so now we get to put our gorgeous faceplate on and tie this all together i want to make sure i i would so i don't think it's super easy to do but when you're putting this faceplate on watch the pins because if it's a if it's a two two uh like a heart k split board make sure you're installing the pins correctly it's entirely possible to slightly have them off maybe you mounted this kind of at an angle i don't know just be careful 
feel like that's one area that there has to have been a few people that have damaged something by doing that. Uh, it's actually not very easy to see. I think that looks right. <clears throat> That looks right. Okay, so M325s and M350s. Where are the M350s at? Oh man, I hope we, I hope we have them. Um, M340s. I think there's a separate. If I'm not mistaken, there was a separate bag of hardware for the stuff burner and. I believe it had the screws needed for it. But I put all of the things in here. Oh, here we go. This has to be it. These, there's four of them. Uh, I had a lot of parts. I'm going for a Rapido red LDO frame. Nice. Po uh, please post some photos of that. Are you planning to build a, a V-Core 3 in the future? Uh, possibly. I had talked, man, I talked like a year ago with Fabrico about doing a um, V-Core build and it just hasn't materialized. I would like, I love my V-Minion. I have it, it's on the ground right here, you can't see it, but I brought it up the other day because I was having some issues with the material and I've had such, like, such great, um, it's been a very positive experience using it. So I brought it up here, but yeah, I, I would like to. I think they're, I think Ratrig makes some really great printers. M325 is gonna be up here. <clears throat> Man, bro. Hey Daniel. A 250 2.4 looks like a V0 in it. Oh, wait, a 250 2.4. What is, <laughs> what does that mean? Wait, are you playing? Uh, Subsourced. Uh, I went with Switchwire for my first kit, but if I had to redo it all over, I'd go Trident for sure. Yeah, the Switchwire was my first big Voron, like not V0 Voron. And I think that might also be a little bit of why I have such a soft spot for it. I just really like the printer. It served me well. It continues to serve me well. Man, it's really coming together now. The, putting the stealth burner tool head or faceplate on just sort of really, uh, really pulls it all together. Okay, so this is not on high enough, I am seeing here. Hmm, I'm gonna have to take this off one more time. Let me see if you guys can kind of see this. The hot end, I forgot about this. The hot end piece that's sort of held in place by those screws, it has a notch and it's supposed to sit, the bottom of it's supposed to sit in the notch on the X carriage back area there and mine's right below it. And because I've already tightened some of this up, I'm not gonna be able to move it. So let me pull this off one more time. Keep my eyes on that and then we will be able to put this faceplate on. 250 2.4. Oh, in the Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Now your your comment makes a ton of sense now. I missed that part of it. The Phoenix is a freaking monster. <laughs> I I couldn't even imagine like housing it. Uh, okay, pulling those off. So let's loosen. Loosen these guys up. There we go. Okay, so now it is flush on that side. So it doesn't want to stay flush. Let's see if I can I'll zoom you guys out a little bit. There we go. So that's, I guess that's a good point to look at before you tighten these two screws up here, one right here, you can't actually see that. Ah, before you tighten these two screws that are sort of slotted in around these little hooks is to check that bottom to make sure it's in place. Cause once 
If it's not in place and you start tightening things down, you have to take it apart. There's not really a good way to get it over that. But yeah, now we look good. So we should be able to just drop, should be able to drop this right back in. Oh, check, <laughs> check your pins. There we go. Oh, oh, that dropped it down. Okay, so yeah, I gotta keep my eye on that. It's from me putting the pressure on it. Is LDO working on Phoenix kits? I never, like, I haven't heard confirmation. I feel like Jason's sort of teased it a little bit. That's kind of the extent of what I've heard. As far as I know, yes, but not full kits right away, just separate kits. Okay, that makes sense. I feel like with the price point, some people are definitely gonna wanna um, source some of their own parts for different uh, different pieces of it. I'm curious as to what the price would be of a full kit. We are making progress on this guy. Uh, that's what I'm waiting for. I'm hoping there'll be at least partial kit for the machine parts. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Steve said that it's the, I think the first Voron that breaks the easy, like easily sourceable parts rule. Yeah, so that'd be cool if they could at least machine machine the parts. Or they need to, they need, it'd be cool also to have a really nice Milo profile for machining out Phoenix parts. Okay, so let's, I think we're, I don't need to overly tighten this. I mean, I want it tight, but. Also, if you have not signed up the giveaway Link is in the description, it's in, or not, it's in chat, pinned, and we're gonna be giving away a spool of polymaker filament in just a, about 15 minutes here, I'd say. Okay, so let's see how this looks. Let's, this wire is so, so long. It looks really good though. I'm <laughs> really happy with this. We have the MM Milo kits now, so Voron uh, machine is, <laughs> yeah, exactly. What is the Phoenix new design? Yeah, it's a, um, I think Nero's the main person that's done a video on it. I think maybe Joel's done one too or something, but I don't know how much of a, oops. I don't know how much of a landing page there is for it. Von Phoenix. It's sort of like a 2.4, like, so it's flying gantry, but it's, um, I think ball screws and it's, IDEX and it's four times the, <clears throat> sorry Nero. So yeah, it's got a bunch of machine parts. It doesn't, like it's hard to get a sense of scale, I guess, on this photo, but I believe it's, is it 600 by 600? Is that right? Yeah, dual stealth burner, IDEX setup, tons of machine parts, super rigid, four separate beds, four, um, four separate AC beds. It's just a, it's a monster. Can bus on both tool heads. Yeah, ball screws for all the four corners. It's just, it's a beast, man. It's a freaking beast. <laughs> it's, it's such a crazy printer. Um, what do you think about replacing the screen with a TFT-35? On the screen on this printer? I don't know. How well does TFT-35 do with uh, clipper screen? I feel like Clipper screen needs a fair bit of real estate to interact with. I would, what is, whatever is on the LDO switchwire rev C, this is what I would go with. 
whatever screen they went with here, which I, I imagine is probably a five inch screen. I wouldn't, I don't think I'd go smaller than that. Uh, oh, 4.3 inch. Okay, so it's a 4.3 inch touchscreen is what's shipping on the new LDO RevC switch wires. So that's that's the smallest I'd go with, I think, for a uh, for Clipper screen. Yes, it's a monster printer. I would certainly, it's, if you, yes. <laughs> I don't even know what else to say about it. It's, it's a crazy printer. Okay, so we're, I think we're basically done other than full head uh, wiring, like cable chain and, and doing the wiring now. So let's start to figure out, oops, great, I dropped a bunch of parts. Let's start to see what wiring is gonna look like for this beast. The build sheet alone is like five. <laughs> Do you need new breakers in your house for that big thing? I I would imagine you'd want its own dedicated circuit for it. How much power will the bed consume? Yeah, I don't know. I put a 4.3 on a V0. Yeah, I think 4.3 is the base that I'd recommend for um, for Clipper screen again. Is the Mosquito hot and a good upgrade for Voron? I haven't really used the Mosquito. Uh, we sold it at Matter Hackers, and I had one i3 style printer there that I used it on a little bit, and it was fine, but. Aside from that, I haven't really used it. I have I have purchased a mosquito for a uh, volcano mosquito setup, but I haven't actually um, I haven't actually used it yet, so I, I don't entirely know. Okay, so thermistors in the front. I don't know. Should we just tuck all this extra wire for right now? I think that it's certainly not pretty. So there's a lot of extra wire on this. Let's see if I go like that. Is this even the right plug? Am I plug? I don't think I'm plugging in the right plug, am I? It looks correct. Let me let me try it without trying to shove all the slack down below. <clears throat> doesn't really seem this doesn't seem right to me, but it's not right. Is this? Should have checked this before, but why would they have? I can't even see. Hold on, let me tilt this whole thing. I don't. I don't think these are right. This looks wrong. Is this what you're talking about when you when you were saying that there was wrong connectors? Did you put the spacer in? Yeah, yeah. No, spacer's in. We did install that. These look like, is this Molex? Oh, you didn't get to the micro fit yet. Okay, it's a micro fit. Let me, I think I pulled out. I haven't crimped one of these in forever, so that's gonna be a fun journey, but let me see. No, these look, wait, 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 these look correct. So is it, you? it's user error? <laughs> I was stuck on the, okay, you gotcha. It could be that it's just not aligning. I don't know why this seems so tight compared to, there we go, there we go. So it seems like that does work. It's not a really nice fit, um, but for now, Tuck, tuck it away. <laughs> For right now, we'll do that. Um, <clears throat> let's pull these guys out of the way. Let me see if I can turn this a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Really, it's a real tricky, tricky angle to sort of. <clears throat> I 
I don't, I'm, I'm confused a bit. Again, I, I don't think, I don't remember this being so difficult to line up on the other builds I've done. I'll probably have to just show after I get it lined up. Um, there we go. Wow, why is that so tight? Okay. I guess with these, the extra cable might not be a huge deal. You can sort of just bend these two out of the way like that. That seems okay. Microfit uh, has to enter straight. Oh, jeez. Gotcha, okay. Microfit has to enter straight, not an angle. That's why then you just have to get it perfectly straight. I just don't remember, maybe maybe the, um, I don't remember on the Trident build, Shammy, Shammy sent me a different tool head board and maybe they weren't Microfit. Maybe they were using something else. But yeah, so those are in, and I, there was a plenty of slack. I just tucked all the slack in here. The way the way this wing goes, as long as we can close it over it, which we should be able to, this is blocking it right now, um, it should hide all of that. So I guess the extra slack's not a huge deal. I'm going to have to pull all these out. So let's see if I've got something where I can poke those tabs. Let me bring you guys up a little higher. The cover will not work. What do you mean? What do you mean the cover won't work? This cover? I, I printed this. I didn't print. If you're talking about this cover, I printed this directly from the Stealth Burner repository. Unless, unless you're saying there's something wrong with that as well. Well, we'll see. Let me, let me figure out these. Other wires, so this is a. I really don't like that. There's not, there's not even a way to access, <laughs> dude. I, I don't get it. Why are these connectors stuck so hard? Are these not the standard JST? Like, do they have? Those little, those little pins on top. I don't, I don't. I've never had to. If you're using this board, there is a cable. Gotcha. So you're saying the front cover has to come off because of it. Okay. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little bit at a loss with these, these connectors. So let's see if I use. Um. Get some tweezers, maybe. These suck. These just suck. Yeah, it cracked it. <laughs> is there, I, I don't get it. Like, is there a special removal tool? Let's see. Are you planning the ERCF upgrade of your existing? There's a lot to know about the changes and the extra hardware you'll need. I ordered a bunch of the stuff using the bomb fill, so I don't think I'm too far off of it. But I, I wouldn't doubt, I don't doubt that I'll have to order some more stuff. I have the Big Tree Tech SB09 as well. Stupid, the design on this. I've, I've used these boards, so it can't be, there are a couple JST knockoffs, which are not as nice to work with the original ones. Gotcha. I don't think this is the way a regular JST is because I've never, I always just pull on them and they're fine. And these tabs, there's two of them. You can't even access the second tab on this one because it's directly underneath this one. So the first one cracked. We might not be using this board. We might have to go with can, which will be another journey in itself. I'm going to have to just break the damn thing. There we go. There's one out. There we go. Yeah, these JSTs are not not great. Uh, you'll need eight millimeter rods and a bunch of grub screws. I think I bought a ton of grub screws, unless the updated didn't show. Updated didn't show. I think I bought the rods too. I can show uh, maybe when we do one of the hangout streams in the next couple of weeks, Phil, when I'm just unboxing another printer, uh, I can take out the box and show all the parts I sourced. One of the bigger Chinese ones are NEG, which are really painful to unplug. Yeah, I don't, I don't like this. 
I'm glad I decided to just solder the um, the other ones. Okay, so you're saying again that this will not close over this. So let's let's plug this in. I see probe is on the top right. 24 volt ground AT FS. That is filament sensor. So this one must just go here. Yep, I see what you're saying. This this cover won't work. Fun. <laughs> so now the thing has to come apart because of because of that latch. <clears throat> Oh, that's such a bummer. <laughs> it's so close. Yeah, it's not happening. It needs a little more space. Okay. Well. I can fire that off. I've got, let me, let me. Do you have the link, uh, YZ, do you have the link to that? I sent the correct files to the cable, okay, cool, in Discord. Sweet, I'm gonna get that printing right now. I mean, we got everything plugged in, but that's, that's a fun one. Let's see, Discord, live streams. Okay, so it's it's this one. This looks like the standard one now. Cable cover PCB STL. But you're saying you're saying this is the right one, YZ? Even though it looks the same? If you get stuck, uh, Magic Phoenix has an extra wide wait, what did it say? If you get stuck, Magic Phoenix has an extra wide cover that's even wider than the Oh cool. Yeah, it's a little taller on the end. Okay, sweet. I already downloaded this, didn't I? <laughs> I just did this. Okay, let's, uh, ABS, no. Okay, we'll fire that off. Okay, it's basically giveaway time, or it is giveaway time. So if you have not, there is a form pinned in chat at the very top, and it says, last call, give me two more minutes to Pull it out, and then we're gonna draw for a spool of polymaker filament. Well, it won't be that bad to, uh, it won't be that bad to fix that. Basically, you just need to undo the four screws on the self burner faceplate, and then I undo the latch, and I should be able to remove that wing. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Although I don't recommend this, if you want to cool the PCB, go with the first link. I'm not, I'm not too worried about cooling the PCB. Unless I go with CAN bus, then maybe I will, since they'll have an MCU on there. But in this instance, I, I've had them closed on all of them. It hasn't been an issue. Uh, let's see. I heard that Cyborg's field instructions are a bit off in some parts. Is that a big problem, or are they just some minor things? Yeah, so there were some parts that were super frustrating. Uh, particularly with the bed, you have to insert their M5, I think they're M5 nuts into the printed part before you put the printed part on. And it, I don't think it shows at all in the instructions to install them, but they have 
watched the stream. Uh, so every complaint I've had in the first six streams, they, I, they haven't uh, watched probably since they've been on holiday, but for the first five or six streams, they watched all of those streams and messaged me with all the changes that they've made to the guide. So they have been fantastic with feedback and they had a couple other users that provided them feedback based off their experience they thought would make the kit better. And there's an updated version of that uh, guide that came out like three weeks ago. So it's it's not nearly, there's not nearly as much issues with the guide anymore. So hopefully they'll fix some of these things. This one with printing the right STL is definitely a bummer. So hopefully they'll get that corrected if this is the PCB they're going with, but they've been really good. They've been really good at, at uh, accepting that they've made mistakes and correcting them, so. All these Vorons being printed on bamboos, it's kind of weird to be honest. I love my bamboos, they work great. And they're just on the network. The the Vorons, they're bigger, so the Trident, well the Trident's um, down the hall because I'm bringing it upstairs. The 2.4 hasn't been plugged in yet. Uh, the MP cover being bigger means you don't need MCU cooling for CAN bus. Gotcha, because it gives more room for the air to circulate. I've never, I've never used a fan to cool CAN bus, but that being said, all of the CAN bus boards I've done so far have been not inside of a small printed area. They've all been kind of in the open, primarily like the EBB 36 or uh, SHT 36 style. What are you giving away? A spool of polymaker filament. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to remove the link. Uh, remove and unpin. If you're getting warping on the bamboo, put something like insulated blanket on top window. The, I haven't had, after we moved, I've had a little bit of issues with warping on the bamboo, which I actually turned just brim on right now. Uh, but I think it's primarily because it's been moved around a fair bit and the build plate needs a good cleaning. I think there's some dust and just crap from, uh, I did a lot of sanding and such, so it probably just needs a bit of cleaning, but that's a good tip as well. Uh, I know they're decent, it's just the bamboo lover Voron haters that make it weird. I like, it's a 3D printer. <laughs> I, I know that in every every hobby there's like sub communities, if you will, but I like all 3D printers. If you like 3D printing, that's fine with me. So whether it's a Voron, a Bamboo, a Prusa, a, an A-Net, if that's your jam, I don't care. Like it's, yeah, I don't. Uh, this was the printed on the P1S. I have the X1 Carbon next to it, but um, ever since I installed the Bamboo, nope, Panda Touch from Big Tree Tech, I've really been enjoying playing around with the ability to set the AMS colors from the printer, which you can do on the X1 Carbon, but that's one of the reasons I, uh, I've been playing around with the P1S a little bit more lately. Okay, let's do this. Giveaway, giveaway time. We got 115 entries. I think that's a couple more than last week. Download. Ooh. Extract. I met someone today still rocking an ANA A8 as the main printer. My ANAT A8 did wonders for me. Once I installed some frame braces and a safer board and a inductive, was it an inductive probe back then or capacitive? I think it was an inductive probe. I, I It did great. It was one of my most reliable printers until I got the Ender 3. But at the beginning it sucked. It, it took a lot of mods, but um, with the mods it did really well for me. By, by today's standards, even it doing really well would be horrible, but for 20, so I got my first print in 24, it was probably 2016 ish when I got it. It was for the price, you couldn't really compete with it. I think I paid um, like $188 off of eBay back when I got it. Okay, so there should be 115 people. Boom, 115. Perfect. Bill of names, bada boom. <clears throat> All right, I need a sip of coffee and sip of water before we before we do this. I was going to build an A8 into the AM8 mod, but yeah, I did the AM8 and it took me years to do that conversion. And then I only kept it for a little bit and I just took the parts off of it. Hey, Pedro, good evening. 
the AMS function is the whole reason I got the pen touch. Yeah, the, uh, I don't know, again, I don't know all of the politics behind Bamboo wanting to potentially update their firmware and encrypt the um, MQTT stuff. I don't, I don't really know the real reasoning behind it, but I will say I, I was shocked that through the MQTT connection, uh, Big Tech was able to set the um, AMS filament stuff, just like you can on the X-Men Carbon. Like it, it is like, I, ca I cannot tell a difference in the experience. It is so clean. They did a fantastic job, so. Hey 3D Print Masters, <laughs> you missed you missed a fair bit. Some frustration, some progress. Mm. We're still gonna be doing at least now one stream on this Ender Wire, um, doing the wiring and some of the firmware config stuff. Then we're doing a, I can't say the printer yet. Well, I can say one of the printers. I got the two trees SK1, so we'll do a live stream unboxing and print of that. Then we're gonna be doing a build of the Stealth Press, and then we're doing another printer unbox and stream, and then we're doing another build, which I don't know which build that build is yet, so I won't I won't share any more info. Okay, okay. let's get into the giveaway. Massive thank you to Polymaker for letting us do this giveaways. If you, I know there's always some new people, so the way these work are now, uh, anywhere in the world, the winner will get an email from me and you'll have to basically fill out a form with your info, where you won, who you are, your some basic info. And then Polymaker will give you a gift card. I believe it's now, I believe it's 30 US anywhere in the world. And then you also get some for shipping. It's, it's changed, but it's enough to purchase a spool of like standard PLA, PTG, ABS, or ASA, or you can use it because it's a gift card now towards like a carbon spool or some sort of specialty spool if you've got your eyes on one um, that the gift card just doesn't cover. So with that being said, how many times are we shuffling today? Um, let's do the range is between six and 20. Not another V0. Hey, yeah, iconic. Yep, we're gonna finally get the stealth press going. I still need to print out still need to print out some of the, um, I think the, all the accent pieces and the main base piece, but I've got a couple of weeks. <laughs> Let's see, we got sixes, a lot of 16s, six, seven, seven, 6.9, a classic. Um, 37 was not in the range. Let's do, so 42 is also not in the range. We'll do, we'll do 15, uh, 15 is where it's at today. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 shuffles for 115 entries, perfect. Okay, good luck everybody in three, two, and one, here we go. KCMO Buff, you are our winner and that is I definitely don't remember all the names that win, but I am confident for standing that that is a first time winner. So congratulations. I will, uh, again, send you an email later today and it'll just be a form. And the, like, I think it's a Microsoft form, maybe Google form, maybe Google form, but it's a form and you'll just fill in some basic info and then uh, Polymaker will send you a gift card. So congratulations. But yeah, I think your first, I'm po almost positive first time winner, so. Uh, I'm trying to think as far as what we can do, what we can do now, now that we, <clears throat> now that we have to take some stuff apart, I guess we can still continue kind of as, as we were going to be doing. So we should be able to plug in, let's see, the wiring harness that came with this kit and some cable chain cables. Let me really quickly see here if the instructions say anything about, uh, do the instructions say anything about how many cable links? Yes, 16. So 16, I think is usually including the end pieces. So one, two, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, 16, including that one. So, okay, yeah, let's do that. Let's go ahead and get our cable chain routed. Hey, yeah, KCMO, congratulations. Someone predicted his win once on Steve's stream. That's all. <laughs> Wait, someone predicted KCMO's win or just like someone said, I'm going to win today and they won. Uh, 
All right. Let's see how tangled or not tangled these wires are. The answer, <laughs> the answer is fairly tangled. Um, I think it's mostly the RGB wire. Okay, let's do, we'll go full screen and we'll do some, while I untangle this rat's nest. Oh, there we go. That's not too bad, actually. So these are just single. Wait. <laughs> what is happening? Oh, God. <laughs> this is a first. I don't think I've had... Okay, come on. I think there's just, like, one bad... <laughs> one or two bad apples down here that's... Causing everything to just look chaotic. This should come all the way out. So this is stuck. If this is a two pin, there should be another. Uh, can I buy, can I buy just the wiring? I don't know if, does anybody know if any of the company, dude, this is going to be a blast. Does anybody know if the companies or any of them sell just a wiring harness? If you reached, maybe if you reached out in this case to Cyborg, uh, the fairly responsive, and you just asked, you know, hey, I'm interested. They, maybe they can just do a custom line item for you. I don't know if they would, but you got nothing to lose and at least asking. I can't believe how tangled this is. Okay, I got. We made some progress. This might be about as good as I'm getting it for right now. I think I got it, most of it. Maybe. Yeah, I think I did get most of it. Hey, Thomas! Uh, great vid, but I have to pretend to work out. <laughs> Thank you for becoming a member, man. Cheers. Uh, I see, I see kit harness. Oh, cool. So there is. That's the colorway we voted on, right? Galaxy. Yep, yep. This is the one that was voted on by everybody. Exactly. Okay, so let's start by pulling this through. And then we also need, uh, so there's a two wire that connects back to this. So this is for the RGB, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So let's, we've got this, this, is sort of tame for a second here. And it said we needed a total of 16 of these, so, and that's including the end pieces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Hey, UPS is here. 13, 14, 15. So let's break it off here. Nothing exciting. It's 256 dog poop bags. <laughs> the least exciting, I guess it's exciting. We need them, but least exciting delivery. Okay, and then I'm gonna look at so that looks like correct. And then we want the other side of this to face the other direction. Uh, your viewers have good taste. It looks great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, viewers. I, I agree. I think it's a gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous color scheme. <laughs> your viewers have good taste. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, so next up, we will go ahead and open all of these cable links so we can feed the wire through. And I believe you typically there's a little slot. The first time I got these, I think it was with my V0. I didn't know what I was doing, but there's a little tab right here. And if you just get a tiny flathead and shove it in here, I think. Nope, that's not right. Or is that right? Yep, that is right. So much nicer than trying to fish, fish all the wire through. <clears throat> I 
Okay, those are all open, and then I just want to make sure I do this the right way. So we want the cable chain that's on the outside to be where this, so okay, so like this. Let's grab. Hey, what's up, old crazy eye? <laughs> Happy hump day. Happy Wednesday. I just realized you couldn't see again what I was doing. I do that, I do that more often than I'm proud to admit. Thinking like, thinking that I'm in focus or showing what I'm doing and I'm like, oh, that's right. You didn't change the freaking scene. Boop, boop. There we go. I have to take off this last link. Yeah, let me take this last guy off. It's easier. It's easier to do this than try to slide things through. There we go. Tuck this in like that. Oops. There she goes. Bam, okay. First cable link is in. Let's go ahead. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. My, my nemesis, these knockoff JST connectors. I, I would love for them to use different connectors on these PCBs. Um, so I just realized that I never plugged in the extruder motor. And the extruder motor is going to be a really fun one to try to get out with that, these connectors. Um, so let's, let's slide, let's slide this guy out of the way. Um, I don't know, the angle that this is in, is it even possible? Oh, heel and lavender. <laughs> Um, so if you missed it, these, these are, they look like JSTs, but they have an additional like little tab that locks in on both sides here. It makes it very, very difficult to get these out. And I've never, ever had an issue with one of these popping out using just standard JST connections. So, oh wait, oh, maybe this one. Oh no, come on. Oh, and there's, because... <laughs> Because I complained, right? It said, "All right, all right, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll give you this one." <laughs> that was the easiest. That was the easiest out of all of them. I don't really have enough slack to tuck this, so we'll just kind of go. That's funny. Okay, they've all been awful except that one. The extruder one was kind to me. Um, this needs to come off anyway. I might leave this one unplugged for right now. Uh, so if you didn't see, this wing is too short for the specific board, and so I'm printing out a bigger wing. So when I have to take this off and remove this, it'll give me a straighter shot to that port. So I think I'm just gonna leave this guy loose for now. But that was kind of funny that it was so easy to take off when the rest of them were just awful. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead then from the back. Let's get our cable chain situated. So this is M3 by six flat heads. I think I have a couple of these loose from earlier that I didn't, let's see, there's one here. Yep, there we go, M3 sixes. I, I tucked my extruder motor wire behind the cable wire. Oh, nice. That's that's not a bad idea. I guess it, since I didn't have mine on yet, I didn't think about that. But yeah, normally, I don't know if in the last ones I've had a little bit more length, but I feel like normally I route it around the motor once and then tuck it in. Or maybe normally I have the motor... You know what? I think I normally have the motor flip-flopped. Uh, so the wire's coming out down here and they run it underneath. That's probably what it is, I think. Okay, oops. Let's see if I can get these. First time catching a live stream. Hey, Wally, welcome. Happy Wednesday. So we are getting a lot closer to the finish of this build. Um, we really just have wiring and electronics left. And 
The electronics will be a little interesting because we're not using a um, SKR board and we're not using the stock board, which will also make it a bit cleaner because we're not going to be using a Raspberry Pi. We're using the Ender, uh, excuse me, the E3 Easy. Uh, I'm probably going to remove the CB1 that's on there and use a CM4 because I have quite a few CM4s. So it should make wiring a little bit cleaner by not needing to use their uh, step down, their buck converter or the um, Ender extender. Nope, that's not, that's not right. That's a mod. The Clipper expander. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'll do the exact same thing that you did, um, Kelm, is just tuck it behind this uh, little support area, this chain. Okay, let's go ahead and plug, plug these guys in. There's one. Ooh. There we go. And we've got two. There we go. And then we need zip tie. I probably should have zip tied before. Let me see if I've got, there we go. <laughs> we'll use the zip ties included with this kit because they, they can't be worse than the zip ties I have on hand. I don't know if you, if you were here a few streams ago, I was going through my pool of zip ties and just about all of them were breaking on me. They were like absolutely awful. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can fit this. Let's see. I might need to use some tweezers or something. Oh, that works. That's kind of neat actually. Okay. So let's do it the other way. Oops. Hey, what's up, Engineering Chaos? Happy Wednesday. Um, really like the Clipper Cloud save video you did. Um, I didn't know it existed, and it's gonna make my life so much easier for backing up printer configs. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's actually funny. I was working on a completely different video, and as part of the video I was working on, I needed to. Uh, I think I think I need to. No, I do need to. I need to update Clipper, and I think I need to reflash. Clipper because of the version jump it's going to require on this particular printer. And so then I was like, okay, well, I need to back up my, <clears throat> I, I need to recommend for everyone in a situation to back up their configs. And that's what sort of led me down the rabbit hole of how do I want to show people the way to back up their configs? Because a lot of what I've done is just manually download and then keep it on a local folder or, or upload it to, um, upload it to drive. And it works. It does work. Don't get me wrong, but it's it's kind of inefficient and it also is is sort of tedious. And generally speaking, if things are real tedious, I, I find myself doing them, you know, as little as possible. And so I, I started doing some digging. I know I think it was uh, Digital Dragon or Luke that had mentioned he has one or uses a script that auto uploads it to drive. And so I looked at a few options and I just stumbled across the one that I ended up covering in the video and I really liked it. So yeah, I'm glad feedback's been really good on it. Um, and so if it helps some people, there's someone actually said, and this is, I don't think I'm installing this correctly or this cable tie is too big. Um, but yeah, some of the feedback I got, someone came back like the next day and said, oh my gosh, I, I saw your video and I installed it right away. And then the next day my my printer like, you know, basically died on me and I had to re re uh, install everything. And because of the video, I had the config saved. So that feels really good when I get you know, feedback like that. Okay, I don't, I don't know if this is exactly how this is intended to go, but it's keeping the wires sort of out of the way. I also don't want to put too much strain on the wires, so we'll leave it like that. That's definitely not very tight. Let's see, actually, let's give a little more slack. One second, I'm gonna try to pull. I'm gonna pull some wire through on this side. There we go. It was just, it was starting to pull on the pins, which I, I didn't wanna rip the pins out of the plug. So I gave I gave the 
the this plug right here has a bunch of adhesive or glue so i'm not too worried about it but the the two pin for the rgb leds don't have anything like that and so i want to make sure i wasn't putting too much pull that's fine i'm probably being overkill with this i don't know where the heck my flush cutters are so we'll use my handy dandy uh needle nose pliers clipper is great but it's still a bit fragile yeah um, I haven't had a chance to get to the VOD. Uh, didn't you schedule the config manual macro trigger? Yes. Yep, I did. So I, the, in the end of it, so I show how to manually do it because you don't, technically you don't have to install the macro if you just want to like do it once and then you're comfortable with SSHing and you can run the script again. But I think that if you're setting it up, um, the extra step was basically to go into Kaya and, and install the add-on that allows you to use G-code shell commands and then essentially just copy and paste the macro that's provided by the Clipper backup creator into your, your config file. And then you've got the, uh, I think it's called, what was it called? Uh, create git, I think is what the macro default name is. So I highly recommend going that route, but I, I kind of added it in the end as an optional thing because maybe some people won't want to do that. I don't know. I think it's worth doing. Okay, so we're pulling wires through. And where does this need to go? So M3, six flat heads. It looks like it's just going, I mean, clear, I guess we can just sort of figure that out, right? By making sure. Oh. So it seems about right, I guess somewhere. Actually, okay, so the determining factor of how far this cable chain should go, in my opinion, is not having the cable chain crash into your belts. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn this around here and zoom out a hair. So if you look at the chain here, if you've got it, to, I mean, right there, it's, it's hitting those belts. So let's pull it back till right at least like there, that seems good. And we've got, I don't know, three, four, five millimeters of clearance on there. So let's get now some of those Flat heads. Let's see if I can find them. Labeled, labeled, um, <laughs> labeled organizers only work well if you actually place the things back in there. Little cubbies. Where the heck did I put them? There they are. Okay. Bam. We've got those. Go. Hey, what's up, Dutch dude? Congratulations on all the updates on um, Mercury One. I know saw a documentation. Your revised documentation was officially released, and saw a couple other a couple other changes. I know you got the collaboration with um, right the VZBot community for the sort of uh, Goliath um, hot end build for for the Zero G. You guys have been busy over there. Okay, three six. We'll just use. Yeah, we'll just see. For these ones, I'm just going to use these little hammerhead guys since I can see it going in and make sure that they're locked in. I don't feel so bad using these. And this will allow me to pull a few more updates. Working on an entire new website. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Yeah, you've been busy, man. Uh, some peeps were running into running it on a time script, not realizing it smashes the CPU usage and kill it. Oh, no. That's that's not funny, uh, but that's kind of ironic because I had at least one or two people comment in the in that video telling me, hey, um, I'm sure that we can get this set up on like a timed thing. And I thought that was a great idea, but I didn't consider that maybe the that would put strain on the actual um, CPU and cause a print error if it happens during a time where you're running a print. That's that's really good feedback. I, I yeah, I hadn't heard that. Yeah, I'm fine with, I mean, again, I get the idea of auto automation. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of automating things away as much as possible, you know, for, for uh, repetitive tasks. But at the same time, I, I don't think, you know, if you're, if you get your config into a good, a good place, like, you know, you're initially happy with it and you save a backup of it. And then every time you're going to do a big clipper update, you know, firmware version update, you you press the button again. I don't I don't think it's that inconvenient. And let's say worst comes to worst, you've made some changes and you haven't done the backup. Well, at least you've got a, a solid baseline, hopefully, that you can return to. 
yeah, I'd be incredibly frustrated if I was running a, a big print, you know, especially an important print and the update, um, the update killed it. Okay, so we've got these little hammerhead guys and we're gonna drop them into the slot. And let's make sure, again, we've got clearance. That looks pretty good. Oops. Let's loosen you a little bit first. Oh, come on. You know what, I think I'll do the other one first so I can... Okay, that's good. Nope. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have done these hammerheads because they're not... They're not spinning the way I want them to. Oh, uh, I do a sandy check and then run the macro. Yeah, that's that's a good, I like that. Run it once to make sure. Okay, you're starting to, you're starting to make me mad now. Maybe I should have done the, um, do I have any of the roll-ins? These are, Five mil, that's right, this kit didn't come with any, so I was stealing them from the Trident build, which is right here. There we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna use the uh the roll-ins instead. <laughs> Going back on what I said. It's spinning on me, it's frustrating. I'm sure I could get it with just trying a couple more times, but it's I can only see the inner or the outer um the outer one. So let's go. The only bummer with this, maybe we'll do one of each. Let's do that. We'll do one of each. So I'll do the outer. The outer one is a hammerhead and the inner is a roll in. That way I can guarantee that the inner is anchored and it's not going to, you won't be able to see it. If that'll even work, will it? I, don't, I might not even have the distance for that. I don't have the distance for that. So you can only use. Okay, you have to use, you have either have to use one roll-in or you have to use hammerheads. So let's try hammerheads one more time. Let's not give up. Uh, if you want to run a macro on a regular basis and adding it, adding it the idle timeout. So that, that just verifies, one second. That just verifies that the printer is an idle before it runs it or or if the printer reaches an idle state it'll trigger that i would imagine it just verifies that it's in an idle state before it runs it i still need to call aaron for the macro the macro lesson i i've got enough knowledge and know-how to mess around with them but there's so much so much more to them that I would like to like to learn. Okay. Try this again. I don't I don't get it. Let me loosen this all the way. Usually with these hammerhead T nuts, if you loosen them the entire way and then reseat them, they usually okay, there we go. Yeah, they play nicely. So I got the inner one in, outer one, outer one is being a jerk. There we go. Okay, we're good. So yeah, hammerheads are the way to go, which is what they come in. They, it's what they include in this kit for at least the cable chain. Although it looks like cable chain is at a slight angle and I wonder if that's because of Mm, I think that's just the way it is. Let me, I'm gonna do one thing here. Just loosen, loosen these two screws of hair. And try to sort of angle the, there we go. Hey hon, happy stream day. <laughs> Mama bot. <laughs> uh, no, the idle timeout on Clipper can run. Oh, interesting. They can run the G code commands. That's cool. I didn't know that. All right. So now uh, we've got this in, and it is in the correct orientation based off of 
what I'm seeing here. Unless, unless Cyborg has their pictures incorrectly, but I don't think so. It looks weird that it goes up like that, but I think that's just the way it is. So now we can reach, we can reach both sides and the cable chain is not hitting our belt. So that's the key. Oh, make him gift you a membership. I forgot, um, thank you for reminding me. This is, well, I guess it's not the last stream of the month, is it? There's still one more, but it's close enough to the last stream of the month. I want to use up my membership so I can give away, uh, how do I do that? Um, there we go. Memberships. Oops, unlock, subscribe. Membership gift thing, there we go. Boom, I've got my last five members for the month. I, I forgot about that. There we go. Let's see, Jack got one, Dutch dude got one, PCV, Tim, and Brent. You guys all got memberships. Woohoo! Yeah, it's weird to me this is sticking up as high as it is, but it's it is the right way based off of the uh, based off of what I'm seeing. So that's okay. All right. <clears throat> Potential spam is calling me. Boop. Uh, you're welcome. Absolutely. I'm glad that someone mentioned gifting memberships because I totally forgot. Okay, so next up we need to... We need to route our wires down here. So they're gonna pop out, go down here, get zip tied in place, then go through another drag chain. So let's... <clears throat> Let's go side view. Let's lift this up. Depending on the cable chain, you have to outside the cable should get the fixed end. <laughs> no, you're saying it's the wrong way. <laughs> no, my heart can't take it. I might fix it on my own then, but yeah, this doesn't look. So he's saying that the, the tool head side should get the fixed end. So this has a pivoting end. This has a fixed end. So they need to be swapped. So the the graphic is incorrect, it seems like. Because with this, since this is moving back and forth, it's gonna put some strain, like this, this bending is gonna put some strain on these cables up top here. I thought it looked wrong once I had it. <laughs> no! Yeah, the other side's fixed. That's frustrating. Well, at least it wasn't like, it was my fault, but at least I did follow instructions. So we have to undo this. Well, let's do it now because it's only gonna get tougher to change this out once we've got the next the next portion on. So I'm gonna try to try to power through this one more time. We'll cut, mm, I don't think I need to cut that. No, I don't think I need to cut that. So let's leave that plugged in. We'll undo these. Hopefully this will be relatively quick. And I'm glad we figured it now again, because once both sides of the cable chain are attached, it becomes a little bit more of a pain to fix this. But in this case, hopefully, hopefully it's not too bad. Too bad you declined the call. <laughs> Just swap the end pieces. That's a, can I do that? Just swap the end. I can't do that. I, I can't do that because of direction. You have to swap the entire entire thing. It's like one direction. So on this one, it's got a hole and on this one, it's got like a peg. So you have to, you have to swap the entire thing. Oh man, we lost a couple of screws there or at least, yeah, we lost. There we go. There's one. I think the other one fell right here. <clears throat> Yeah, I wish I wish you, you got me excited for a second there. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll just swap the swap the heads. But at least 
again, this cable chain has these little tab guys, so it won't be that difficult. But it would be nice if they could fix that picture or at least put a note saying, oops, oh shoot, did I break it? No, at least put a note saying um, to do the cable chain the opposite direction. I know Steve commented on my Trident build because on my Trident, I think even and my 2.4, I have it the wrong direction. And it, it does make a difference, especially, yeah, I'm going CAN bus, I think on both, or like Nighthawk on one and CAN bus on the other, so it's not that big of a deal, but it does make a difference. It, it definitely puts some additional strain on the cables, which is not good. So let's shove this in there, there we go. Okay, so we want, so this end we want down here. So we need to flip around. Let me see, undo these. So this needs to go like that. And this needs to go like that. So, okay. So let's feed this through. We'll put the ends on in a second. Boom, okay. So fixed end is this guy. Oh, come on, there we go. Yeah, that's better. And then moving in, so let's, let's attach this side first. Let's just get two screws in. Um, one here, one here. One bamboo X, uh, oops, shoot. Uh, let's see, one bamboo X1 carbon or three to four under three print farm. Is the goal for a print farm? Man, that's a tough one. Um, well, I keep learning today. That's another tip for when I do this myself once my new PCP arrives. Wait, are you doing the cyborg kit too? Or are you doing a different one, Marcus? Yeah, that's a tough one. It depends in my opinion. So like the X1 carbon will be way faster. Oh, shoot. It'll be way faster and more reliable and capable, but if you have a lot of experience with 3D printing and you tell me you like only want to print PLA in your farm, come on, the Ender 3, I've had a lot of good experience and typically more printers is, is gonna always be faster than, than, um, hold on, let me, well, typically more printers is always going to be faster than a fast printer. But in that situation, in that scenario, I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, if it's for, yeah, I'd probably go with X1 still. <laughs> I think I'd still go with X1. The Ender 3 just has a lot of, a lot of tinkering. Much better, yeah, thank you for, thank you for pointing. I, it didn't look right, I commented on it a couple times, but once you said it, I'm like, yeah, it's probably, probably something I should just address right away. Okay, so let's leave these, I'm leaving these top screws semi-loose just for a second. There we go. Oops. Oh, come on. In that scenario, I'd probably actually not get the X1 and save the money and go with like, I don't know how the P1P price, can you get two P1P? Wait a minute, what's happening? Is it user error again? I think so. Wow, that was tight. Okay, yeah, I'd probably go with two P1Ps. Um, if you're if you're considering Ender threes as an alternative, then it sounds like an enclosure is not that important. And two P1Ps would mean that you get you know twice the output essentially. And um, 
yeah, I think that's what I would do. Or P1Ss. I, again, I don't know the exact price of the X1 right now. I think it's twelve hundred versus maybe six ninety nine. Uh, yeah, yeah. Two P1Ss is, is probably the right answer. I I agree because you get the enclosure. I mean, the P1S basically can do everything that the X1 Carbon can do, with the exception of you need to upgrade your extruder gears, you need to upgrade your hot end, which is a pretty inexpensive and simple mod. Um, it's not even a mod, upgrade. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's that's the that's what I would do as well. That way you can still print in the wide range of materials because it's enclosed, you've got the camera monitoring. Uh, that you don't have to install yourself, you don't have to print out panels. Oh, Jack. You guys want to see Jack Jack? I thought he was going to sleep. Oh, he did. All right, we'll show we'll show Jack. Hold on. You want to say hi? Here you going to be on. What's up, big dog? So what's that on your like microphone for me? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> uh, this is our big almost one year old. Huh? Almost one. Almost Gosh. one. I was talking. Oh, oh, he got bath on. Ooh, you smell clean. I said that we were going to be getting him a, a cupcake and a banner for his birthday. And I said, take photos. Yeah. Huh? A boo, boo, boo. A boo, boo. We're going to go on a walk after, huh? Boo, boo, boo. <laughs> <laughs> After I'm done streaming, we're gonna go on a walk, huh? Go check out the neighborhood. How long do you sleep for? Yeah, nice, dude. You got a good nap in. He was bouncing. That's awesome. Yeah, good job. I'm proud of you. We'll go on a walk after, okay? That's my microphone. That's my microphone. Bye -bye. All right, bye. Wish me luck. Bye -bye. Daddy needs it. <laughs> Thanks for the visit. I didn't know. I thought he was just going down. He was napping. I heard him crying from the dogs barking and all that, which I get. It was loud and scary. It's funny. I, well, not funny, but they had sent me an email yesterday, and I thought, I thought that the email was confirming for something like a few weeks out or making sure we were still on board for it. But it probably was, hey, I'm confirming for tomorrow, and I just I, I didn't get a chance to read the email. I just saw the, I just saw the um, subject line. So, yeah, that's cool. Okay. We'll keep it for the year mark. Yeah. You can so. email you all the... Cool. Awesome. Thank you. I'll see you in a little bit, okay? See you in a little bit. Oh, yummy. <laughs> oh, everyone says hi. <laughs> yeah. A lot of highs. He's like, let me talk. Oh, she's in a... Yeah. Hold on. Here comes Jack. <laughs> 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 Don't touch the lens. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, he's not allowed up here. I I'm looking forward to when he's, you know, able to be up here and not, you know, eat the screws and, and do all the things that babies want to do that aren't good for them. <laughs> but yeah, for now, for now, it's major off the limits. Okay, let me turn this around a little bit. Wow. I forgot you got that bath. That's awesome. When I'm done here. We'll take a walk. Or I'll t I don't know. It's 2:53. I want to go a little bit further. So maybe like 3:30. Yeah. I was I was planning on going probably when you went to work. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. You're leaving early today. Bye, Jack. Man. Okay? She's uh she's been up here licking her paws in the corner. I, I we put her on camera a couple times, but uh yeah, she No, she was outside the door after the guy showed up. She was in here before. Yeah, she can stay in here. Yeah, I think so too. We should print in one of those small toy size printers. <laughs> He's so cute, man. <laughs> yeah, he's he's very uh, 
Yeah, he's like analyzing everything, man. He's just he's just staring at me like, what are you doing up here? What are you doing? Uh, will you review the FL Sun T1 or S1? So if it ever if it ever gets delivered, then yes. I was told in December that mine would be shipping in the end of December, and then I was and then I don't think I heard anything, and then I let them know. I let them know towards the beginning to middle of January, hey, I'm, I'm moving in, you know, the next little bit here. So here's my new address and, you know, and they said, great, we'll ship it there when it's ready. But I, I haven't gotten any info. So I hope so. I, I love Delta printers and I mean, on paper, it looks pretty crazy. Um, it looks pretty crazy, which is and I think it'd be a lot of fun to test out. So the answer is I hope so, <laughs> but I don't know because I'm not sure what the heck is going on behind the scenes there at uh, FL Sun with this printer, so. Uh, I didn't follow the serial. Is that belt driven Z? It is belt driven Z, yes. So this is basically a switch wire, but it's an ender wire. So it's an ender to switch wire type conversion. So it's a Core XZ. So for anyone that just, just to one more time sort of um, clarify the reason why we undid the belt and and uh, did that was, if you go back in the video, you'll see that this end link was this one, which pivots. Uh, it pivots more up and down. And so as this is going back and forth, you've got this link right here that's moving, um, pivoting. It was sort of sticking to my head. What are you doing, girl? It was pivoting and so that, upward um, pivoting puts the kind of sharp plastic in contact with the cables and it, it, it will eat through those cables. It will eventually short things. So you definitely want to make sure that the, the moving end is on the rail because it just doesn't have any sharp point after it. And the fixed end is on the tool head like this. So, yep. Got an ad. Yeah, I think in some in some cases it plays an ad every half an hour, give or take. But it seems very dependent on your location. So I don't know. I don't know what your location is, but yeah, there's. I've done what I can to minimize ads, and it seems like this is about as as good as it's gonna get. Okay, so let's next go ahead and attach this. Um, zip ties, more zip ties. So there's a little zip tie slot right here that we can push through and this will give ourselves maybe a tiny bit, well, yeah, we'll give ourselves a tiny bit of slack. I feel like it's tough to determine the correct amount of slack. Like you don't want the wires pulled super tight because if you do, you're kind of forcing them up the walls of the cable chain, which means more wear, but you don't want them super loose either. It's sort of like a, I think that looks pretty good. Tempted to put another, uh, tempted to put another zip tie right here. Um, it's not real tight either, so it, it has the ability to play, but I might add another zip tie. I'm gonna add another zip tie right there. <laughs> if I'm thinking about it this hard, I should just do it. There we go. There we go, there we go. Okay, it keeps it a little bit cleaner for now. I'm curious if we'll end up doing CAN bus on this because if we're going to be doing the ERC FB2 on it, I think that the uh, the board I've got from Big Tree Tech is a CAN bus board. It's their like ERCF CAN board, and I think that the E3 EZ has onboard CAN bus capabilities, so it might make sense. Well, we might have to at least run CAN bus. We might have to run CAN bus, so we'll we'll see. All right, and it looks like this is going down and then up the next cable chain. The only thing is. I don't see any mention of, there's no mention of how many links we're supposed to use. So I can try, if we zoom, let's see. Oops, 
that's not what I wanted to do. Looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, including the ends. That's what I'm counting. Um, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and the ends that are already on. So we have the perfect amount, it looks like. Um, and I recall Steve said he tried to make it so the wires don't touch either the side uh, at the bend radius of the chain. Yeah, I think that's probably a good recommendation. Um, I think a little easier said than done in some scenarios. I, I'm pretty happy with how this is. And I, I don't, the only printer I've actually had a cable chain break a wire on, ironically, was the switch wire and it was the Y axis. So it's still like that if I'm not mistaken on my current switch wire, it's still working fine, but it's not good and I need, I need to fix that. Okay, so let's make sure we've got, this is going to be going like, nope, this is going to be going like this. So we need to open the side up. Holy cow. Oh my God. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> what the heck? It's either I don't do enough force and it doesn't open or I freaking Hadouken the thing across the room. So, okay. Only 18 more to go or 17. Dude, what the? All right. So maybe the answer is slow. Okay. So slow and a lot of force versus kind of a flick motion. <laughs> Yeah, that's working better. Okay. Go, buddy. Um, pivot end, wait, pivot end on the bottom and fixed end on the top, right? Fixed end on the top? Mm, no. Wait. No, this end has fixed end on bottom. Damn, it's wrong again, isn't it? Yeah, pivot end. Pivot ends on top. So I need to swap these out as well. Is my Y axis wrong too? Are they all wrong? Y axis looks good. I'm gonna leave the Y axis, but yeah, I think I need to swap these too. I'll swap these really quick then before before I install this. Did you find a good music? No, I'm, st I'm still using it, man. I, uh, knock on wood, the last, I think, two streams I haven't gotten flagged. I think it's probably what Nero said. Maybe it's not a, um, maybe it's not an issue with, maybe it's not an issue with them, like, Stream beats themselves, but someone targeting people using stream beats and just basically flagging certain tracks. But yeah, I haven't, <clears throat> I haven't found an alternative. I, I pay for, I pay for, um, oh, I pay for Epidemic Sound. So, and I don't hardly ever use the tracks. I was using them for shorts a bit because uh, the shorts I felt like let me be a little bit more creative since I didn't really have a set style in that. And I haven't done a short in a very long time now. So I probably should try to just use that since, since again, it's like a service I'm actually paying for each month. There's also some freebies out there. I know there's a, gosh, it's been a while, but there is a company that I was, not a company, a YouTube channel. There was like something Fox, Sound Fox, or um, I can't remember the exact name, but it was Fox something, and I used them for a lot of years on YouTube. And they just have, the issue with them though is that their tracks are all sort of like, like they're EDM-y and a lot of them have pretty, like pretty intense, like upbeat, upbeat, a lot of BPM, which was fine for low background music, but it's kind of not what I want mood wise all the time on my streams. Like I kind of like them to be a little chill. And then we, then we switch it up when the stream sort of has progressed a bit. 
So long story short, no, I haven't really. I'm just using that. This is still stream, stream beats, and the I know you got hit hard. I read, I was reading one of your messages. I think it was on Twitter with Nero, but um, and I think you said one of your streams had a bunch of strikes. So far, knock on wood, most of mine have just had one strike. So it, it's been all I've done basically is clip out that part of the video, which is still annoying to have to do but it hasn't like taken away from the ability to rewatch the video or ruined the in What's wrong, pretty girl? It hasn't ruined the enjoyment of the um the streams. But yeah, if I was getting hit with lots and lots of them, I I don't know what I would be doing. Hey, Cyborg's here. Hey, just a few steps away from giving life to this kid. Yes. We are making some good progress. Man, I uh some feedback the the connectors used so i don't know what these connectors are on this this particular board i'm gonna let delilah out she's crying she doesn't like when i talk aloud for she doesn't, she doesn't like my video voice <laughs> um these connectors that are sort of like jst xts they've got these sort of like securing pins on them and they are awful to remove almost impossible to remove i cracked i cracked one of the connections on here trying to pull it out i don't see like one of them you can't even access these little points to push down on but if at all uh if you have any control over these particular boards and how they're manufactured i would get rid of the little security notches and just go with standard jst which is what like everyone else uses um that's been a bit frustrating that's the only thing i think we've ran into so far other than that it's been smooth it's been smooth sailing today but yeah just those those little gist oh and then also the um this door the door in the repository seems to be the incorrect door for this particular board you need a slightly larger wing so someone sent me the correct door but i would double check that and um update the repository to have the correct electronic store so a couple small things but other than that i mean it's been pretty pretty smooth sailing um i'm i'm printing the correct wire cover for the conversion with abs i'm an unenclosed but highly modified inner three now because i don't have access to some card wish me luck it doesn't work too much if you if you use hey, ah man it's gonna be a little if you use a decent sized brim you'll probably be okay Maybe? I'm wishing you good luck. Okay. That is on. Let's tighten this piece back up. Okay. That looks good. Tighten this piece up. Uh, I had autoplay accidentally enabled once and had a lot of claims because, oh no. Yeah, we ran into that um, on here as well. That was part of the issue. So the issue originally was that some of the some of the music I was using was getting false copyright claim. And so I didn't know what the issue was. And so I narrowed it down to only using two albums. And so I, we never really ran into the issue of running out of, um, never really ran into the issue of running out of tracks before. But we did once I shortened it to only having those two and I had autoplay on. So then it was really, it was really screwing me up by playing just sort of like whatever it wanted to that was not royalty free. So it's been a, it's been a fun, fun adventure trying to figure out why am I getting copyright strikes? This has never been an issue and I haven't changed anything. Boop, boop, and boop. All right, so let's go. Well, this needs to go down. So I'm probably gonna add another zip tie to this bunch before it goes into the cable chain. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> All of a sudden I, I feel in my stomach. I'm like, oh, food sounds pretty good. There we go. And then this needs to feed down below, so we'll need to 
<clears throat> okay, so let's do a couple things real quick here. Uh, we take notes of all your comments. Thank you for helping us make better results. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think you guys are doing overall a fantastic job. And I, I've mentioned multiple times that like, you know, yes, some stuff should absolutely be caught in earlier testing or pre-release testing, but I, got, I have to give credit where credit's due. And there's a lot of companies where I say something and they're like, cool, great. And then, you know, that's it. Um, but the fact that you guys have constantly taken the you know, the criticism and, and actually taking it to heart and done something about it is, is awesome. So it makes the experience better for everybody. Okay, so we need to feed all these wires below the deck. And I think I'll just start, move you guys out a little bit. Let's just start shoving some things down here. Two more that need to go in. Okay, let me see if I can get my hand below. There's one, <laughs> I've got one, one stubborn wire that went underneath the panel instead of below deck, there we go. closing this one or leaving it open? Yes. So this one's going to get enclosed. The other switch wire that I built um, is no longer enclosed. Originally, why did I enclose it originally? I don't know why. I don't know why I originally unenclosed it, but um, the panels have since been destroyed and it's I just, I mean, I guess I could order the panels again, but that one's not enclosed and I don't have any plans really to enclose it. So yeah, this one will be getting enclosed. Um, but it'll be later on. I, I think we're gonna end the stream uh, series with this thing printing, and then we'll take a few weeks off so I can play around with it. And then we'll have one final, uh, one final, what am I doing wrong here? Did I put this on? Oh, you know that looks, that's right, one second, let me. Can't really see what I'm doing. There'll be one final stream after where it'll sort of be just a chill um, hangout stream and we'll put the panels on for that one. There we go. Just need a little more force, I think. This one on this side is being a little stubborn. Okay, this one is just not I'm confused. Okay, I'm gonna remove this one again. There's nothing blocking it. <laughs> of course the other one doesn't wanna come off now. All right, I'm confused a little bit. Let me flip this around so I can see. It's really, the light's shining from the opposite direction so I can't really see what's happening here. <clears throat> Are you using the default wire kit? Yes, yes. A three hour late night meeting, oh my gosh. Yeah, so this is the default wire kit. Um, for now we're using this. I don't know whether we're going to be doing CAN uh, when we go to the ERCVF, but for now we're gonna use it as is. But yeah, I can't get, Oh, got it. Okay, so it was a matter of, um, 
I need to tighten this printed part down. I think a hair more as well. That sounds like a, that's a really long meeting. I have like a one hour, I have like a one hour cap on meetings where if it goes beyond that, I am just way too in squirrel mode. I have a heart, like I'm there, but like not really. Okay, that looks good. Stick, oh, that's not what I want to do. There we go. Okay. Why are we not going higher? Oh, no. These, what did I do wrong? This is not enough wires. I did 20, that is not, <laughs> that's not even close to enough. That's funny. Okay, well I counted. I guess the, <laughs> maybe another recommendation would be for the X axis, it tells you recommended number of sections 16. <laughs> and then for the next chain, there's no mention of how many wire or how many cable clips you're supposed to use. So I counted these, there was 20 in this image, but clearly that's not even close to the full amount we need. So I'm gonna have to steal, I don't know how many more I need, but quite a lot. I mean, I would say, do we have enough cable chains? <laughs> I think I have other cable chain I could use in case there's not enough. Um, I feel like there should be another strand of cable chain somewhere that... Where did it end up? Hmm. Uh, it looks 30 to 35. The image wouldn't be able to go higher either. This is the only chain uh, that's left. So I've got four more links, which will get us a little bit higher, but certainly not to the top. The issue is, so there was three chains that came in this kit. And the first one we used was Y. And I'd like to think that the extra cable links would have ended up back in the box for this kit. It's entirely possible that they got moved. <clears throat> entirely possible they got moved somewhere else, so. There's not any left in the box. There's not any left in the random Ender 3 parts. So, I think I've got, I think I bought a fair bit of cable chain, which hopefully is the right size a while back. Um, where would I be? If I was a cable chain, where would I put you? Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I don't know if in this... Oh, okay, here's some cable chain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. My random AliExpress purchases. So I don't know, again, in this case, I, I'm not going to blame Cyborg because I don't know. It might have been me. Um, but I... A couple late night AliExpress purchases. <laughs> and here we go. So let's see if it... How similar are they or how different are they? They look identical. They look 100% identical. Sweet, okay. So let's just, let's take some cable chain. Again, in this instance, I don't know if, if the kit was short or if it was me. I, I don't see any spares from the Y and I think the Y chain had some spares. So I, they, they might've given me enough and I just, again, I, it's me and we moved. So I have more of an excuse than, than I typically would. Uh, you could steal some of X. I could steal some of X, but uh, if I if I didn't have these, then I probably would do that. But I bought I bought. I think originally I was purchasing some of these for the ERCF, and this is way more than I am gonna need for that. So let's try. Um, so let's do. Uh, let's go here. Let's break apart the chain, 
and then move it all the way to the top and see if we can gauge of how many how many it looks like we're gonna need so let's break you um let's go down a little bit actually there's one there we go okay so we're moving up wow that is a lot okay um that is an awful camera angle oh my gosh <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> all right there we go okay so this is all the way to the top let's pull let's give ourselves a little more slack here i'm gonna say This looks about the right amount. So we weren't actually short by very many regardless. It looks like I think we need, let me take this off before I count it. Okay. So I had one, two, three, four left, and it looks like we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it wasn't super far off. And, and like I said, in this instance, I just don't know. I'm gonna take the blame. Eight to 10, I got seven. Um, eight might work. Let me, okay, let's let's do seven. I'll attach it to the top and see what it looks like because I, I don't want, I don't want much slack, but I also don't want it to be pulled too tight. So we'll, we'll find out right now. This seems right to me. Um, I think that seven might be perfect. There we go. Yeah, I think seven is, seven's good. Eight, eight would be, eight would be pushing it in my opinion. So let's, let's get this all locked in. Okay, I lied. <laughs> I lied. I think we can use we can use one more. It's a little it's like it's close, but it's just a just a hair tighter than I would like it. So eight was the right number. Whoever said eight, someone voted eight. Uh eight to ten. PF. Yeah, eight, eight looks eight looks good to me. This would work, I think, but it's just on the top it, it goes in a little. Oh, come on. Here we go. On the top, it goes in a little. So yeah, let's add one more in this area. Thank God chains you can open. Oh yeah. There's been a couple, I don't, was it the VZ bot? It wasn't terrible on the VZ bot build when we had to route it, but I think the VZ bot build, I don't remember if they opened, they might have. There's, there's definitely a, oh shit. There's definitely a build that I've done. God, come on. All right. There's definitely a build I've done in the not so distant, or not so, just it passed that uh, didn't have them. And it's, yeah, it's such a pain, such a pain compared to, compared to this. There we go. Perfect. I am happy with that. We can get all the way to the top. We can get all the way to the bottom. Yeah, I think that's good. Probably add one little cable tie, maybe above here. <clears throat> time is it? It is seven three or three twenty four. So I think the last thing I really want to do is attach the board to the bottom. So if we look at if we look at the instructions, we got this. Oh, we need to put this cover on actually. Thank you. 
M38. Yeah, let's do this cover. Wait, where does this go on? Huh. Maybe. So it looks like there's, or does this just, does this just go into the extrusion? I can't actually tell. There's nothing in that printed part. Let's do, um, let's, let's open the CAD really quick here. This will be the last thing we'll do. The VZBot builds don't open them. Okay, so the VZBot didn't open. That's what it was. Finish updating. No, let's open now. Funny, I was just thinking 24 total just because beer. <laughs> Time to design a new roto mount for the Mercury. Oh, cool. I've got a roto in that I need to test out. I was originally going to try to put it on the um, uh, second cube. But I've uh, started trying to design something a few times and <laughs> gotten something and given up every time. So, okay, so it's a T nut in the extrusion. Okay, well, we'll do that then. I'll pull this open just real quick, but let's slap this on here. Yeah, there you go. Cool. All right, that's what it is. Bring this down. I'm going to be running Duet hardware on my new Merc. Oh, cool. Dude, Dutch, when is that frame coming out, man? <laughs> when is that frame coming out? I'm not in a rush, <laughs> but I'm also Curious. Okay, so this is just a little cable cover. So we're just gonna put a little hammerhead nut, T nut on there. Like so. Oh, no, that's not right. Sometimes the simplest things are, are what get me. All right, I can't use. There we go. Okay, so this should just be popping on top of here. And going like this. Oh, you know what? Slack, there we go. Let's not break this part. It's a pretty fragile little part. There we go. Okay, so this guy goes in here. Let's tighten our T-nut. That did not do at all what I wanted it to do. Ay, ay, ay. The T-nut gods are not smiling down on me today. There's plenty of times where I can just get them to spin easy peasy, but today they're like, none of them are spinning. Okay, so this is one where I'm doing, this is the one where I'm doing a roll in. I am not going to fight you. Hey, BBs. Just no instruction. Oh, wait, wait, would you say uh, it's in beta, but there is someone in there that can make you a frame to spec. Oh, sick. Do you know what the price is? I feel like it's got to be like it's got to be expensive. Have you reached out to, um, was it DL, DL, the company that makes a bunch of custom frames like D, DLLPF or I can't remember. Okay, so this doesn't sit. Doesn't sit perfectly down, but it looks fine.
Oh man, this is my most used, this is my most used Bondus driver. I've had these now for a few years. It's finally starting to tear on me. Okay, so this is what we've got. This is what we're dealing with. Boop. It looks nice. It looks really nice. So we're gonna call it here. Um, I was originally going to mount the board, but we'll start, we'll start with the board next week. Basically, this is what we're using. I found this mount on printables. I can share it if someone ends up wanting to use this board. It's an uh, E3EZ. We're gonna end up swapping out the CB1 for a uh, CM4. And then this is gonna get bolted to the bottom. And so this is our, our MCU. It will be our clipper host and it will simplify things. So down below, all we're really gonna have right now is a power supply and this guy. Um, and maybe, yeah, no, that's it. Um, so, the things I'm going to do before next week, okay, $235, yeah, it's, well, I mean, it's a beefy frame. Leo will most likely make the frame for the global market later. My next machine is built on a sample frame from them. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, DLL PDF. I feel like if you gave them the params, they would be able to build it for probably less. I feel like they're, they're, um, if, I don't know again, uh, but yeah, if you're, if you're using LDO in the future and um, there's another guy making them now. It might be worth reaching out to them for the uh, some of the U.S. market Dutch. So, yes, between now and next week's stream, all I'm going to be doing is taking this off because this is not the correct sized one. Um, I'm going to replace it with the one that's probably it's finished printing out now. It's slightly larger wing uh, to get over these micro fit connectors. I'm going to be installing the the extruder wire into the board on the back, it's tough to get with this wing here. So when I take this wing off, I will get that installed right on top of this board. And so all we're gonna be doing next week is basically trying to get this thing up and running. I'll probably even install the bed before next week. I mean, it's just, I'm just going to take the magnet, punch out four holes and put it on here. So that way we can just focus on getting board installed, getting things plugged in and working on some kind of a clipper config and testing things. Cause I would love, to print like even two layers of a cube by next week. So we can, you know, again, take a pause, like call this done for now. I can play around with it. And then we'll have another final video on it in a few weeks time after we've done the stealth press and a couple of printer unboxings to kind of revisit it. But we're getting there. We are really, um, we are really getting close. So, um, oh, that's the, that is the price from them. So it is, that is DLL PDF you're saying. Do not forget to buy magic smoke for next week. Oh, fingers crossed. Nice that it goes smoothly. It'll be, it'll be interesting. It, I'm going to be starting. Originally I was like, oh, I'll just use the CB1. It's set for an Ender 3, but no, no, no. I got a couple CM4s. I want to throw in a CM4 so I get as good Wi-Fi as possible and I get better, um, like just a more powerful uh, SBC. So, dear Lord, if LDO starts selling colored mercury 1.1 frames, they can <laughs> So, I think we'll call it there. That was, um, Pretty successful. There was a few hiccups today, uh, minor stuff like chain wrong direction, which was my fault. I, I went based off of the guide, which I should have should have gone based off of what was actually right, but I was just following the pictures. So we had to swap out the heads of the chains for both and um, the wires for the Stealth burner, in my opinion, are long. I think that we kept them for the LEDs inside, but for all the wires that need to get bunched up on the back side of the PCB for the faceplate of it, I think you're gonna have a really difficult time getting that to all sit in there nicely and not create a gap between the faceplate and the clockwork two and the hot end assembly. You might be able to get away with it. I know, I think some people use like maybe electrical tape to just sort of get the wires in there, then put a piece over it to keep them in place and push it on. but. In my opinion, recrimping those or soldering those like I did, if you feel comfortable soldering is probably the superior way to get rid of some of that slack that's just gonna be in the way and isn't necessary. So game plan for next week is go for gold. I don't know what Erin's schedule is for. I think she's next Wednesday. She, oh no, it's the following Wednesday. I think she works the same, I think she works the same schedule. So it might be the same one hour earlier today. And even if she's working 
one hour later next week, I might keep the same schedule that way if we need an extra 45 minutes or so, we can sort of just go for it because I, again, would love, love to power this thing on next week and do the initial startup checks and maybe spit out some material. So, <clears throat> so yeah, I think that calls it for today. Thank you everybody for hanging out for all of the comments. Congratulations to our filament winner for the day. Thank you to Polymaker again. If you see anything you like color wise, at least if you're in the US, because these colors are only in US and Canada for now, uh, there's a link in the description over to Polymaker's website and it does support the channel. So that's always appreciated. Thank you to all of our members, all of our new members, all of our gifted members. I know uh, there was quite a few PF uh, had 10 gifted memberships. So thank you very much for that. But yeah, I hope everyone has a fantastic week and uh, look out for next week's stream because we are if I don't fall over, we are going, we are going to power this thing on for better or for worse. So, all right, take care, everyone. Also, nice. Good luck with your, um, good luck with the rest of your workbench and stuff. All right, cheers, everyone. Bye.